And welcome to the Woodville Oval. Rod Campbell with me this afternoon. And Rod, I know you don't like omens in history, but gee, the Glenelg supporters will be hanging on that. Gee, 1999, last time they won here. They will be, and I love the history of the game, but it's going to be an exciting game. We've got two fiercely competitive teams, already qualified for the finals, and looking forward to a great game today, Neil. A little bit of psychological advantage, you think, for the winner this afternoon. Last night, as we said, North Adelaide beating Sturt by just seven points to sew up a double chance in the finals. We'll have highlights of that at quarter time. Eagles Glenelg, our match of the day, and we'll keep you in contact with the two other games this afternoon. Through the Premiership table, and as you can see, look, apart from what a hundred point victory by Glenelg, the Eagles are certain that they're going to have that double chance. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see a hundred point margin today. Eagles deserve to be in the top three. The great form towards the end of the year. They've won the last four in a row. Glenelg the last five. It's just going to be a fiercely competitive game. Looking forward to it. And looking at the goal kicking list, Brad Chambers assured of being number one. As you can see, six goals last night, 106 for the season. It is close further down. Justin McConnell this afternoon on 58. And Flatco, of course, playing for Norwood this afternoon with 57 goals. Down to Sodas on the boundary, and Sodas a late change for the Eagles. Yeah, there sure is. And speaking of goals, a man who kicks plenty of them, Mark Passador, is out of the side, a late withdrawal. A bit of a problem with his back, nerve-related. Now, it wasn't too bad, but they decided not to risk him today. And his loss somewhat countered by the fact Grokey back in the side, Adam Grokey, after kicking three goals in the reserves. And Ronnie Fuller's just inked a new contract that'll keep him in charge here at Oval Avenue for another two years. I've uh, always enjoyed doing it, and uh, particularly this year, it was a, a tough tough start to the year but uh, we fought our way back and there's some terrific juniors in the club and it's going to be good to be a part of that. Now we look at the Eagles side so as well as Pasador there's McGregor and Inkster missing from this lineup but very exciting playing Petrenko made his debate, debut last week. Looking some exciting things from him today you know. And so does uh, Glenelg, some sad news, I guess, in some ways, for the former captain, Ben Nor Moore. Yes, a little speed demon has decided to hang up the boots, and he's also pulled out of today's game, actually. He's got a bit of a hamstring problem he picked up Wednesday night. Uh, he did it a little while ago, but Wednesday night training felt a little sore, so he didn't want to risk that before next week's elimination final. So Benny will go out in a big note playing finals football. And last time these sides met in round 16, well, the Eagles got off to a flyer, and it's something the Bays have looked at. Yeah, and we've worked on that, you know, for a, a lot of games since then too. And uh, you know, the, the, it's, it's often hard to put a finger on why that happens, but we we have arrested it to a fair degree, and we'd certainly be looking to a, a fast start today. Okay, we now go to the Glenelg lineups. They also miss out on Richie Douglas today, who's travelling with the Crows. But a tough midfield with Fisher, Murphy, Allen, and Back will provide a, a real competitive opposition or opponent today for football. So as you'd have to say, the uh, conditions here pretty good for football, though maybe just a tad warm. Yeah, a little warm. Around 26 degrees is the top we're expecting. The players will find it uh, uncomfortable. The ground's in good nick. A bit of breeze around, just swirling and also favouring the right of screen. So that could uh, have some bearing on the contest today. But conditions certainly great for watching. And uh, as we said, the players, I think, will find the going a little tough as the day goes on. Now, Rod, a couple of topics to talk through as the players begin to take up their positions. Firstly, what does either side draw out of this match in terms of winning it? I just think the finals atmosphere and finals competitiveness is what both sides are looking for today. So it gives them a real good march into finals time with that type of footy a week before the finals. Do you take an edge in if you win this match? I think so, a mental edge. Just You go in knowing that you can win, you can play that sort of footy and come out with a victory. I think the Eagles know they can do that. The Nell don't know yet, so it'll be, they've got more to prove today. We've discussed the conditions. We look across this picturesque ground. It's a beautiful, dry afternoon made for running football, if you like. Glenelg likes to score. Can they score, say, a 100-point win? And oh. puts, it gives Sturt <laughs> hand them back the double chance. I don't think that's going to happen. Today's <laughs> uh, conditions are ideal. When the finals come around, it's usually pretty windy. We'll see how we go today in these ideal conditions. Well, as he said, players just about uh, in position now. Michael Maney's in position, and away we go with the first quarter. Dead right, Neil, and what an important game it is psychologically for both these teams, as the boys said. Players Day Hay and Rouston tuning up for a final series, maybe. Round 23, extremely high bounce by the umpire. I didn't think it was going to come down for a moment. And a free kick in the middle will go to Paul Lindsay for the Eagles. So they'll get the first foray forward to Powell. On the lead, Salter. He's a good player, this fellow. Definitely knows where the footy is. 
ball just seems to follow him up forward and he's normally a good finisher. Eagles aren't renowned for their fast starts to first quarters and Mark Micken wants Glenelg to start fast today. So we'll see who gets the points. Nick Salter did a hamstring a few weeks ago. Good to see him back in the side. Booted half a dozen last week and needs to draw this back. Good looking kick. It'll fade away to the right but first blood to the Eagles and as Mark Soderstrom said they're just kicking with a slight breeze swirling around and it's Let's go to the Eagles bench with Mark Soderstrom. Well, Jared Petrenko has been in emergency for many weeks. He finally made his debut last week. 17 touches against South, did very well. And he's joined by Brad Dabrowski and also Sammy Fairclough. That's it, there, that's it! Ben Mills, the skipper of Glenelg. Back to the McGarry medalist in Backwell. Patient, slow. Eagles will man up all the way. And again, Newell's under pressure, but took the short pass at centre half back. He can come to this side of the ground. They've got a couple. Hinge and then Sherwood, and Hinge didn't get it to him. Now he's got Backwell. Backwell can go down the line. He went by hand of Newell's. Now they've got a little bit of space, but not much, I must say. That's a good mark by Kirkby. Took several of those last week against Sturt, leading up the ground. He in a real contest this afternoon with McKenzie. Now Mules, he's had a great start, hasn't he? He, he has, but it's a slow start to the game. No 15, play on, play on, so that's not 15, and Ruwalt forced a hand pass, now Fisher. Then they go to Kirk, who wanted to go wide, so they've gone right across the ground and basically gone nowhere. Now Rudolph takes his time and drives it inside 50, and that's an unrealistic attempt at Mark, I think. By Josh Marnie. He might still be celebrating Port's win after last night, Marnie. I think he wasn't anywhere near that. Redden just shorts it up to the skipper in Sikalella, who's starting to run into some form coming up to finals time. Has had his injury problems. Premiership player to the wing. Redden's run on. He was the one who delivered to Sikalella. Kirk ran out of bounds with the footy. And Redden just makes sure he takes him to ground, but a boundary throw in. Warm conditions, around 26 degrees, Rod. This will be uh, interesting to see who's got the fitness to go the journey. Tough conditions, but they might see something like this all through September, I think, Michael. Need a bit of rain, that's for sure. Grounds it. Let's go down to Mark on the Glenelg bench. Big Trev Cranston came back last week from a, uh, I think he had a punctured lung he suffered against South Adelaide. So he's back in action again today. Got through OK last week. Josh Willoughby bagged four in the twos, and Lucas Block's also on the bench. Jared squeezed the kick down the line. Hinge just backed himself with his pace and then found a couple on their own on the wing. Splicks over the back. Good work by Allen to Backwell. He kicked around his body with a high wobbling ball. Joe Pedler's got the zinc cream on. That means it's warm and Fiacci's worn one around the shoulder from Smith and he'll get a free kick. The left footer. Okay, we're just looking through this and you can see Smith grab Fiachi too high and a well deserved free kick. Bernie Vince. You can see that ball's got a lot of carry on it. The target was Salter again, but Sugars did well and Sicalella to Treby. Treby measures the kick. It might flick over the back. It does. And a grateful Simmons is there. Gee, that was delightful play there. Sicalella came back. He knew Treby was on his left foot. He knows his teammates' abilities. Treby came over, just popped it over the top. As we just go back to the replay now, see Sikalala, the captain, out to a left-footed Treby, straight into the corridor, and Simmons, a nicely floated kick over the top to Simmons and finishes off with a good goal. And welcome back to the team, Dale Simmons. And fellas, that's Simmons' 50th goal in this NFL company. Interesting there, Josh Marnie again, just misjudging his attempt to spoil coming over the top. Yes, he's uh, not quite with it at the moment, Josh. Lindsay in the middle, lovely palm down. Vince couldn't get a clean disposal. Now it's Kane for Glenelg. Down to half forward he goes for Ruwalt. Set him a task. Fiachi got him off the ball. Now he goes back to McKenzie. Quickly to Fiachi in the 1-2. Forced to kick around the corner and gave it up straight away to Murphy. Murphy. Now... Interesting contrasting styles this afternoon. The Bays will want to go hard and quick, and the Eagles very much get numbers behind the ball and make it a contest all the time. Here's Vince running free, and Grokey's giving him a strong lead. Couldn't handle it below the knees. Sherwood did. 
Now he wants to push off. Lomash came at him strongly. Sugar's in trouble. Salter got him. Garoki took it. Now Sikalela. Goal coming up, you'd think. Lovely square ball. And Simmons marks it 40 metres out. And how was that vision from Justin Sigalella? That was absolutely brilliant. Sigalella started on fire. He's worked inside 50, but to even spot Simmons then and bring the ball back the way he did, unselfishly, it came off. It's going to be great to watch on the replay here. Michael, if we go back to it. But Sigalella, absolutely brilliant. He's found Simmons and sets him up for his second shot at goal. Unfortunately, it was only behind. Disappointing kick from Simmons, who has kicked that goal from about 20 metres out a moment ago, but there's a swirly breeze out there, and that just may be putting off some of the players this afternoon. The goal kicking, I noticed in the reserves, are pretty good, though, as Rudolph prepares. Boots to the outer side. Good fly in front, not paid. That was Sherwood. Ball to ground, and a ball up. Gee, Bernie Vince has been good so far. He's had two terrific possessions and lovely kicks. He got his hands on the footy there. Is working well through the centre square as well, Michael. Yeah, it's a tough day out there. Here's Vince Sherwood, just in the congestion, open it up with a brilliant handball to McConnell, who wanted to use Backwell to Fisher. They just share it with Kane. So a lot of possessions as Marnie tries to go to McConnell. McConnell didn't want to bend and kick it off the ground. That's not some of his best worst work, Justin no. McConnell. If you see, uh, if you're looking to go into finals footy, like tapping the ball on both players there and just reaching for the ball instead of getting the body behind is not what Mark Micken will want to see. Just saw a shot of Mark Micken and here's McConnell. Over the top, Holmes, back to McConnell. Nice to set up Smith. Treby got in the hole. That was terrific play. Murphy working close to the line and did come off his boot in the end. And a bit of... How's your father down there? Close to the line just to stir up the crowd here at Woodville Oval. Just have a look at this here. You can see Murphy tries to pick the ball up and kicks it out on the floor. Here's Holmes. Quick disposal. And twice he got it away from the pack. Now Sicalella, he wanted to go back and in the end he missed with the hand pass. And the free kick will be taken by Allen, who was riding him all the way. Now it doesn't really open up at all for the Bays. Allen forced to go down the line. And Smith was a target, the ball knocked out of bounds and he's had a go at Pedler. Wait on the umpire's decision. And umpire Colin Ralston says, yes, that was a nice backflop, but he didn't actually get you. Yeah, we'll just go back to that. See Joe Pedler trying to milk it, as only Joe can, but the umpire was a little bit smarter on this occasion. Seen plenty of that green mouth guard of Joey Pedler as he went back laughing then. Another tight contest around the stoppage. It's come out the back. Kane takes his time. He's run 20 metres backwards. Now looking for the hand pass to Holmes. Did well. Did well and then gave it back to Kane. One, two is on. Running stall was Holmes. He did well. Just got the kick away. Simmons put him under pressure. Well done by Allen. Comes around on the right foot. Puts it up in front of goals. Doldig was taken to ground. Now back well. He couldn't get away. Yes, he could. Got the little kick away. Marty, no. He couldn't take it. Kirby in the back. Free kick. Yeah, Mark McKenzie's got to be a little bit more careful than that. It was a bit obvious he needed to stay out of the back of his uh, opponent there. But good play by Glenelg. They got the ball inside quickly. Just going to go back to this one here. You can see McKenzie and he's just overcommitted. And that's going to cost you a free kick every time. So Kirkby from 20 metres out has no problem with it. And the Bays have taken almost 10 minutes to just get their opening score of the game. Just go back to the replay here. You can see them driving the ball in, Glenelg. And this is where Backwell gets the ball. Brings it back, just keeps it in the area. And playing in front is exactly what you want to see players doing. And Kirkby did that well. And he's a good player and knows where the goals are. Been at five last week. Rory Kirkby. 
just hitting some nice form coming into the finals. Two points in favour of the Eagles who scored the first goal through Simmons with a nice well-judged mark over the back and, and a goal. Dabrowski took it out of the ruck and pumped it forward. No mark. This is Grokey. Grokey goes for home and just sprays it away to the left. They'll be be handy to get some game time into Adam Grokey, who's missed a few games with injury, Rob. Yeah, he's a very important player to the Eagles. And, as you said, he needs to get the game time, needs court time, and today we're doing very well, especially in these conditions. His Mules had a great start to the game. Chris Kendall will just tell us how many stats he's had already. Picked up a few marks. Yeah, four kicks coming up for his fifth kick, uh, five kicks, I should say, fourth mark. It goes long to centre wing. Kirk became over the back, punched it away for Archie. Inside 50, Cooper sat under it bravely. Mules came late, but Cooper will take it. Gee, there's a lot to like about the way the Eagles are going inside forward 50. We go back to this and all over Cooper. Good courage, as you said, Neil. And he gets wins a free kick. Just the ruck change going on there for the Bays with Cranston having his first run. And Lucas Block waiting as well, just about to come on. A good combination, Kirk and Cranston in the ruck. Cooper, 10 goals, 11 for the season. Make that 11, 11 for the season. Terrific goal, Matty Cooper, well deserved. He showed courage, he was very brave and sat under that foot. He earned a free kick and finished as only he can with a beautiful goal. Here we go back. You see Cooper standing his ground. He knew what was coming. He had to take what was coming. Great kick by Peter Fiacci. And the Eagles are using the ball well inside 50. They're finding players in short, giving them a chance from good spots to have shots at goals. Former Sturt Premiership player, Matthew Cooper. There he is in the Adelaide Hills League. Was a real star and then drifted down to play with Sturt. And he's been a star in the SNFL. Yes, he played for Harndorf in the Hills League. Out of the centre, congestion there. Pack of players, a secondary ball up in the centre of this very, very hard Woodville Oval. It's uh, been much rain about for a fair while. Awkward bounce by the umpire. Didn't take it back, Circulella. Back to Trevi. Trevi, oh, sold the dummy. And then split the behinds. I overcommitted. Yeah, terrific play out of the centre. Well, you would have thought, when he had a second look at it, Lee Trevi would have kicked that goal just offline to the left side. And a terrific clearance and terrific uh, play by the Eagles again. They've started very well. Yep. Rudolph for the kick in. Goes to the outer side. Sherwood got hands to the ball, was pushed. Sherwood will take the free kick and the drift back by the Eagles defensively. McConnell is the option inside that Sherwood briefly considered. Now wait on. Up by coming across and suggesting maybe there's a bit of blood on Sherwood. And now he's being forced to surrender the ball. He'll run to this side of the ground and have to come off. Well, he does that. It was interesting to see last week, Neil, when uh, at the quarter time break, Mark Micken speaking to his charges. It was a wonderful insight to coaching at SNFL level, and his instructions or instructive talk was terrific to see. And obviously, a very good coach, and has Glenelg playing well for him this year. Paul Sherwood coming to the bench. He's trying to go directly to the bench, but you can't do that. You have to go through the interchange, even though it is a blood rule decision. Now, this has meant there is a batch of players about 40, 50 metres from where the ball or where the kick will be taken by McConnell. And they've all huddled together, and finally breaking is Kirk. Quickly off around the back to Ruwald. And he'll come this side of the ground. Block, position A Good to boy. a strong mark. And now he looks down the line, and the Bays have successfully switched their target of attack to this side of the ground. Well, successfully. Well, they did that part right. They just didn't get it any, <laughs> anywhere near their half-forward line effectively. So the ball out of bounds. Plenty to think about. The Eagles by 10 points halfway through the opening turn. Ron Fulham. Studious coach, as Mark said, at the top of the program. Another couple of years for Ron at the Eagles. Well-deserved too. He's got them back into another final series. Over the back, Ruwalt. Good handball to Kane. Kane a bounce. He cuts in towards 50. Loads up a long kick. Is it going to come back? Kirkby can't get back to take the mark. Another behind. He's a good player, Kane. He's uh, rotating through the centre. 
and had some good valuable possessions already. Long kick of the ball. Pity he couldn't finish with a the goal there for Glenelg supporters. Now the slow, patient, effective Eagles bring the ball in. Red and wide out, just where the 50 arc meets the boundary line. Big mistake back. Well, came back at him nicely. He'll look set a corridor. Didn't like what he saw. Now he does. Ball was touched. And gathered in the end by Allen, released the hand past Marnie, that wasn't 15, play on, higher to Redden, higher was hit late, umpire will bring it back. And it will be a free kick to Redden because higher was taken out late, so the ball will go down the ground and Redden was the player who gets it. Well look at this, a fantastic smother by Backwell, deserved a better result in the end, he came back on his left foot, but a goal wasn't to be. Dennis Redden taking his time and again it's a one on one contest all around the ground so he's forced to go down the line in front of the grandstand long and high peddler at the back judged it best brilliantly peddler wastes no time long and direct assaulter at centre half forward Jared was there fair close spoiled his attempt in the end now hinge for Glenelg mules down the line he goes carries the pack Fisher out of bounds. Now the camera's right in the action down there. This is a great dress rehearsal for finals footy as you alluded to Neil. It's tough one-on-one -on -one footy. Exactly what finals is about. Daniel Kirk just gets some refreshment. Just takes a rest. Will Sherwood be back on. Sicalella working and dummying around. Does it well. Jarman like. Got it to Vince. Vince's high kick, Schwarz can't take the mark, loose ball, running into the pocket, Schwarz, can he keep it in, did well, got it to Simmons, Simmons, squared to Powell, that's a good result for the Eagles, that ball was just about out of bounds, terrific work right on the line by Schwarz. Yeah it was, and once again the Eagles finding someone inside 50, just go back to it, you see Simmons, he shapes up, could have had a shot for a goal, but saw Powell in a better position. Not a known goal kicker, Luke Powell, and it's not the best strength in his game, and this might just test him from here. Four goals, five. Coming into this match, Luke Powell. See what he can do. He's been able to do what most of them have been able to do today, is miss. So the Eagles, 2-5. That's uh, poor kicking with a slight breeze to that end. It is. He's a terrific player, Powell. Of course, he's runner-up in a McGarry medal, and it's been fantastic since he's come to the Eagles from Geelong. By a total of 3-6 for the afternoon for the two teams. Been some poor goal kicking, hasn't there? Yeah, it's uh, almost as low as the goal kicking we saw last night in the first half of the AFL final. McConnell's short to Sugars. He goes for Cranston, who did well in the end just to spoil the ball. Treby, back to Lindsay. Loose kick, you'd expect that from the big guy on his wrong side. Now Fisher running from Ruwalt and Rudolph crashed through one. Kane had numbers. They work it through Allen and now Sherwood will, Sherwood will look inside half forward. Good lead from Doldig. Didn't quite hit him. He picked it up well. Gave it away. Straight away to McKenzie. McKenzie was good. Lomas. Lomas has got one free on the wing. Treby. Good carry on the kick. Treby's a left footer. And he'll run away from Cranston and go long. For Salter, couldn't get rid of Sugars. That was really nice from Sugars. And now they'll go the other way, the Bays. Mules from half back has got a runner on the wing in block. Takes it on the wing. Gets around Vince. Vince with the desperate dive. And the kick's turned over. And McKenzie is just dropping back in that hole as he does so well. To the outer side to Treby, who's having a pretty good first quarter. Fair close. Will run and bounce along the outer side. Straightens up now. Looks for Salter, who's got some body work to do, and that is clever. He is an exceptionally talented forward, this guy. Uses his body well, takes a nice mark, and normally a pretty accurate shot for goal. There's some in interesting uh, by play going on here as we see Josh Marnie come off the ground for a rest with uh, Rudolph at full back, and Schwartz trying to play one out in the square. Rudolph trying to run him up the ground. And that leaves Salter with his opponent there in uh, Sugars as the two of the key forwards jostling for position. What do they say? It's a disease? <laughs> They've missed again. 
Rod, we can understand uh, Rudolph just trying to run Schwartz away. Last time they met, Schwartz bagged three goals in the first 15 minutes of the game playing on Rudolph, and Rudolph was switched from that position. So no doubt he's trying to keep Schwartz away from the goal front as much as possible. It's been interesting because Sugars has to make the decision whether he stays in salt or goes back to Schwartz a couple of times. He's played smart footy, Sugars. McConnell, good awareness. Knew that Backwell was there, now Holmes. Now to Backwell, quickly off he went, oh, it's set up. He set up Murphy who lost it. They do have some numbers and they do have some handball sharing going on. I think Ruda, oh, I think uh, Fairclough will get a free kick, or will he? No, it was out of bounds. Let's have another look at that. I think the ball goes out of bounds here. You see McConnell, who runs out of bounds with the ball and good decision by the umpire, as they always are. <laughs> right, angling for another competition medal somewhere. <laughs> Here the Eagles, they work it through the hands to Jarrett, off a step, he went inside 50, well done by Solder, got rid of his man, well done by Sherwood, who left his man, came across, took it towards the boundary line, 25 around from the Eagles' goal. 21 minutes opening quarter, the margin 11 points here, and last night it was a great contest between Sturt and North, and the winner secured the double chance, and that was North Adelaide, we'll have those highlights at quarter time. Cooper at the back, he's on his left foot and left hand and off to Vince and Vince doesn't miss. Gee, that was good play. I was just watching Vince as he wandered down and was free in the forward line and thought this looks dangerous because they've been relying on their tall forwards. Let's go back to the replay here. You see Cooper, clever, over the top. Vince was in space and should never have been. He's an on-baller, wasn't manned up on and terrific goal. He has wonderful skills and is a terrific player, Benny Vince. Good goal kicker for them. Limited appearances, but uh, 16 goals, 7 on nine. the season for Bernie Vince. Yep, very accurate. Uh, nine scoring shots to two at this stage of the quarter, and the Eagles 3-1 to one out of the centre, boys. That breeze, Mark, just really probably two or three goals, you'd think? Yeah, no doubt about that, Michael. It is, look, it is pretty significant. Uh, I'm not sure you can tell up there in the box, but... Look, I think uh, the base talked about a fast start, and uh, if they can remain sort of within two or three goals against this breeze, I think Mark Mick can be reasonably happy. Out of the centre, just a high kick. Redden just backed himself, went after the footy again. A lot of congestion. Stewart's there, just takes Al on the ground, and another ball up. Ty Allen's been amongst the thick of it so far in the first term. It's looked pretty handy. Looks like he's running on top of the ground at the moment. He's had a few injury problems. He Tell means a lot to them. He gives them that toughness around the ball. Michael. Rock, he is a tough nut, Ty Allen. He's a paver, and he actually split the webbing in his feet to work over someone. Didn't even miss a training night from it, so he'll have a crack all day. Don't worry about him. Uh, he's, uh, he's a good one, no doubt about that. Free for over the shoulder went to Dabrowski, who found Cooper. Cooper loves to wheel around on that left boot, and he can normally kick long distances. He'll hope for a mark. Salter, oh, brilliant play. Can he cap it off for the goal? He did. That is class with a capital C, Nick Salter. Well, he's missed a couple, and he's finally found the radar. She is a real player, to... isn't he, Salter? Like, the way he's handled this first quarter, he's been terrific. He's jostled for position. He's been one-on-one. -on -one. We just watched the ball go down now. Used his body well, and he's finished superb. Maybe he has a future above this level, Michael. Oh, no doubt about that. The guys are a goal that have got goal sense and able to take marks and use their body and read the play like this guy. Yeah, no, he's terrific. Well, gee, two form teams in the competition coming to this match with four in a row. The Eagles had won and Glenelg had won five in a row, but certainly that form is uh, proving elusive for the Tigers this afternoon. Dabrowski tried to hit it in the end, had a fresh air. Cranston slipped out the hand pass, he rebounded out to Kane, hard surface to crash in on. Dabrowski put it in front of him, tried to get it past the goalkeeper there in Backwell. Gee, it's ferocious in the middle. Look at him go in. Oh, we get another bounce, and yes, that happy birthday to Glenn and Alice Springs, I assume. It's from the he is the son-in-law of the team manager of the Eagles. He's <laughs> drawing a long bow. Good work. Eagles in tight, doing the job at the moment, and that looked high on Treby very briefly from Murphy. It'll be a free kick. Treby, he's a long kick. He's favoured by the breeze. He pumps it long and it didn't come off the boot right and so Sherwood's intercepted it and the veteran drops it in short for Fisher and the Bays just haven't been able to break the stranglehold. 
They can't get the ball inside 50. I don't think they've got it inside much in the last 10 minutes, boys. Backwell's got it on the wing and wants to go short to Fisher. So they're just playing that short game if they can just gradually tacking their way toward goal in, against that breeze that Mark Soderstrom reports is around two to three goals at least. Hinge used his body well and just couldn't take the mark. Back well, taken the ground fiercely by Fairclough. And a ball up right in front of the interchange bench. And Mark, you had a pretty, you got a pretty good view of this. The umpire decides to just throw it up. Treby. Cranston locked in one arm, bursts through, Fisher over the top, Willoughby's got some work to do, Marnie cleverly to Holmes, got a free kick Marnie for pushing the back, you know that he'll put his body on the line every single time, Josh Marnie may be playing his last season of football, one wonders whether he'll play next year for Glenelg, short kick, Fisher just went without it, Good tackle, Treby. That's surely going to be rewarded. It's not. It spills out the back to Marnie. Marnie looks for Kirkby. Kirkby can't take it. In they go. Pedler thought he caught one high. Handball back by Stewart. McKenzie. The kick was effective. Close to the line. And finally dribbles over. It's a fierce contest, Rob Campbell, at the minute. It is a fierce contest. It's what we were looking for. And you can see that uh, both sides don't want to give anything here. Inside 50s, 13-7 the Eagles way at the moment, boys. Eagles averaging five possessions for every inside 50. Glenel nearly 12. The two Fisher. most efficient sides in the competition, but today the Eagles well on top in that area. Fisher with another possession. High towards 50. McConnell was there, went to ground, I thought far too easily. Knocked in by Kirk, did well. Now they share it to Smith in the corridor, and Smith just shut down brilliantly. Cleared to the far side of the ground for Jared, but he won't get there ahead of Kane. Kane can now chip over the top to Mules. He goes further than that, and Murphy couldn't take it. And again, the Eagles' pressure very evident in those pieces of play. Let's have another look at how they do it. This is a fantastic effort here. You see Pedlar fiercely committed, and he creates a smother, gives Brody Lomas a chance to get possession of the footy. <laughs> Murphy taken to ground. Umpire says, I'll have it in front of a scoreboard that shows 4 6 for the Eagles. Glenelg 1 1. Cleared out by Fiachi. Mules intercepts. He chips it back inside 50. Bit of carry. Kirk, we missed it. Smith shared it with Kirk. And they have another one, the Tigers. Almost, you suspect, against the flow of play. Certainly was. It's good to see that Glenel got the ball in there quickly enough then to uh, score, a, to have a scoring opportunity. We just go back to it. Mules gets the ball in. You see McConnell where he should be. The ball comes over the top, and the big fella <laughs> runs in and finishes off with a good goal, Kirk. So Glenel staying in the hunt. They need to be within a couple of goals, even with this breeze, to stay in this match, which seemed to be slipping away from them. It's the Kirk and Kirkby show at the moment. They've got the goals for Glenelg, Simmons, Cooper, Vincent, Salter with goals for the Eagles. It's back to a 17-point margin. Once again, a high bounce, very, very hard surface in the middle there. Trevi's dropped the footy. Good reward in there for Young Holmes. I've been pretty impressed with the way he's gone about his business so far in this first term. And that's a good kick out in front of his man in Smith, who can't mark it. Willoughby front and square, taken to ground. Some good tackling here, the umpire says I will ball it up. Ticking into 29 minutes of this first term and the Eagles had the better of it you'd have to say. Booted four goals but they've missed some easy opportunities and they could have been further in front. Cranston just belts it. Marnie lost it. Jarrett good tackle by Block and a block and tackle. <laughs> yes, it was a good tackle and he started, he started quite well. Block. Still inside the centre square, and that'll be it for the opening term here at Woodville. And the Eagles were impressive, but they did sneak back a couple of goals, Glenelg. And at quarter time, the Eagles 4-6-30, Glenelg 2-1-13. It is a true indication of where the game's at. The Eagles 17 points in front is just reward. They went inside 50 a lot. And have this game well with the breeze.
Well, as we promised, uh, it's quarter time here and it's time to look at last night's match where Sturt took on North Adelaide and the winner was, of course, guaranteed the double chance in the finals. And although North Adelaide started the first few minutes OK, they really were swamped by the double blues in the first half. And at one stage, Sturt opening up a six-goal lead and they did some very good work from their youngsters. They were missing a few players, the double blues, coming into this match and they certainly made a good fist of it in the first half. Yeah, look, the stakes were high and both teams came ready to play, but it was Sturt who, uh, after two losses in a row, and with their Brant Chambers kicking his 100th goal last week, were ready for the contest. Yeah, Chambers provided five goals in the first half, a great target up forward, but they were without Thompson through concussion, Herring with a hamstring, Bentley to the uh, Port Adelaide side, and Gregory with an ankle who were uh, all mainstays of their side this season, the Double Blues. They found some options, there's no doubt about that, certainly in the first half, and they discovered some of their best form. And that's going to stand them in which step for the finals. The disappointing part for Sturt fans and their coach, Rick McGowan, is the fact that they lost a game that guaranteed them the, the, the double chance. They don't have that now, but they, they come into some good form coming into the finals and get some good game time with some younger players. What we see here is some of the class of North Adelaide. They keep uh, eight goals to three in the third term to come right back into the match. They only trail by six points at three-quarter time. And we see that not very often in this NFL footy. The class and skill taking it from end to end. We don't. And the faith and confidence they have in their game plan and the way they go about it to come back from something like that. Again, they're good signs for North Adelaide leading into the finals. and gives them the double chance, which before yesterday was looking a little unlikely. See there, the double blues getting one back, but certainly you said a dominant performance from a team that was thought of really as mentally fragile in North Adelaide. True, and it's one of the tests they had, and they still have that test to come in this final series after the last couple of years, so we'll see how they stand up for that. You see there, they went in full of confidence at three quarter time. Andrew Jarman bursting through the gate. Here's what he said. I'm proud of the way you so 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 on, boys. One more game. You'll go down in history. He's one of the great wins in this country. Well, that was just a taste of it. We'll get some more in just a moment as we look at how the last term unfolded and the Double Blues just simply overran in the end. Yeah, there was a game there to be won and it was a matter of who wanted it badly enough and it was North Adelaide that came out on top last night and just a great reward for the confidence they had in their system to get up and win a game like that is great for their finals aspirations. Now, I promise you, Les Burdett has this ground in good nick. The grass doesn't look like it's full of life and so it will be even better for the finals the downside for the Double Blues, they've played on the Adelaide Oval three times this season. They've had three losses to Glenelg, the Eagles, and now North Adelaide, three finalists that they'll come up against. Seven points the margin. Brant Chambers, as we said, kicking six goals, 106 for the season. And we mentioned about Andrew Jarman, the scoreboard on the hill, and he had a few words to them. And there are some words that we can't let you hear, but let's have a listen now. Stay calm. You know why you got back in the game? Look, look over on this. Stoppages, stoppages. You smashed them. That's you it, boys. Them and you didn't give up. You died the balls I've ever seen you do before. And you ran. You ran. Don't stop. You kick the next goal. You play this. Oh, oh, come on, boys. Oh, everyone, stay calm. Play in front, and you'll get the free kicks. You're I'm proud, I'm proud of the way you're so done. Come on, boys. One more game. Finish off. You'll go down in history. He's one of the great wins in this country. Oh, Ah, the passion of Andrew Jarman, don't you love it? Stay calm, meanwhile I'll go right over the top. Yeah, it's beautiful footage and he's a very passionate man. And look, I don't think we'll hear the same from the Glenelg huddle. I think Mark Micken's a little bit more measured. We're going down to have a listen. You should be able to feel it. You know, we, got the, we didn't get the start we wanted. We didn't get the start we wanted at all. But we started to work our way back into it because we started to be more competitive around stoppages. We still need a real good contest from our Ruckman. At the centre bounce, all they do is they're walking across and not jumping. We talked about it all week. Get a good jump away. Hold and then run and jump. Get right up knee in. Get up get, get up there at it. That gets the momentum going our way then. And that's super important. Centre bounces are super important. And you blokes have huge responsibility to get the ball going our way. You blokes around them 
Give them, the, give them the voice, give them the support that they need. OK, because the big area of the game... Well, we heard Mark Mick and it was all about the start. Really they didn't quite get it, but they did work their way back in. Over at the Eagles huddle, well, they're reasonably content with the way that they've gone about it. A little bit disappointed that they have been wasteful. And Andrew Rogers spoke to the defenders. A little bit of, uh, well, undisciplined where a ball did go over the back. It led to one of the Bay's goals. Now that uh, Glenelg do have the breeze, he wants his players to be very, very mindful that in defence the ball must come front, not go over the back, because it will tend to carry a little more but he wants that discipline just to be tightened up a little bit thanks for that sodas as we just look at your favorite stat the, the uh, center clearances and the inside 50s yeah thanks neil with inside 50s 13 to 10 glenelg got the last few which evened it up the eagles were very dominant early and used the ball well inside 50 but didn't finish with goals the center breaks pretty even but i think the eagles have an ascendancy there at the stoppages around the ground quickly look ahead to what's coming up next sunday on abc tv and Note that that's next Sunday when we get into the finals and note the time, 1.30. It's a double header in the elimination and qualifying finals. Back down to Sodas. Now, the man of the moment for the base, Benny Moore, announced his retirement. Out with the hammy. Is there any danger that you won't play an elimination final next week? No, nah, a bit precautionary today. Just uh, looking forward to next week. No, the hammy could be 100% next week, so ready to go. Good work, Benny. And the boys uh, got back into it OK? Yeah, we'll take that. We uh, A bit of a three, got three or four goal breeze out there. So a bit harder at the footy. Uh, we'll be looking forward to, you know, getting in front in this uh, second second quarter. Looking forward to seeing you in action next week too, Benny. Good work. Good on you, Soda, man. Well done, Mark and Ben Moore. It'll be great to see him back. Second quarter of round 23. Kirk and Lindsay flicks over the back. Fisher missed it. Cooper didn't. Fisher got him. He got it away, though. Powell. Kicked it high. Salter's there. Worked his way in front. No free kick. Flicked over the back, well done by Grokey, back to Powell, measures looking for Schwarz. Didn't complete the mark, Treby, desperation Marnie, Treby again, Mules, just gave it to Hinge, Sugars, Sherwood are out of trouble, the kick will find Holmes, he won't mark it, he got a good bounce, over the top is Smith, running with him Fisher, he goes further afield to Smith, then he lays off to Fisher. In the pocket is McConnell, and it's lace out. It's nice to see. Sorry, Mike. It's nice to see McConnell back in the forward 50. He picked up most of his possessions outside of 50. He's kicked 58 goals. He's their main source of goal kicking, and I think he needs to play close to the goal square. It's a good idea to have him when you've done McConnell. He'll have to do a bit of work here. Let's see what he can do. That is a wonderful kick. Perfect kick. He knows where they are, this man. He's he certainly at 59 does. 59 now. Terrific kick by McConnell. He sized it up. Very confident approach. Just laid back on it. Kicked it beautifully. Put it in the right spot. Good kick by Fisher. Smith saw him coming. Great teamwork and great finish. Nice start to the quarter by Glenelg. We need to see them keep it up now and make a game of it. Justin McConnell, quality player. Always wearing the long sleeves, even on a day when it's going to reach 26 degrees. Coming across from North Ballarat, I imagine long sleeves compulsory there. <laughs> You'd imagine so. Lindsay steps across, and as Mark Micken suggested to his ruckman, get up and tap it. Don't just hold back, and that's what Kirk oh, did. It hasn't given them the clearance, though. Now you wonder if Lindsay's just going to maul Kirk to save him from being able to jump. Really enjoy listening to Mark Micken at his breaks. I say he's very instructive with his words. Cooper opposed it back while he went after his opponent in Jared and brought him down. And umpire will call for it. And now Jared and back will get into it. And it's three on to one, four on to one. The Eagles surround him. Free kick to Backwell. He, he was the initiator. Absolutely. You knew he what he was, was going to do. He Just is the umpire's favourite. You just know here he's going to do something, and there he goes, puts the pressure on. Jared just tried to defend himself. Ball down to half forward, Fisher standing off the pack. Around one, long kick to the goal face, McConnell. He was in the middle of it. Well done by Peddler coming in and behind play. Doldig's down, maybe an ankle, maybe a knee. Mark Soderstrom will keep an eye on that as Peddler clears it to the far side, and Powell, no two grabs. Was good enough to get it to Sicilella. Players in the corridor are plenty for the Eagles. They go long and direct for Salter. Sherwood got it to ground. Now he's in trouble. Going back defensively. Tried to get it to Sugars. 
Now it's held up inside. Maybe Sugar's dived on it. Umpire says, my ball. And let's have another look back at Matthew Dolby coming down in the middle of the pack. She is a little innocuous, but obviously the result not good for Glenelg. Yeah, it's got to be an ankle there somehow. And Sherwood's gone to Salter, and that's not a bad move if you're uh, a Glenelg no, fan because Salter was getting some uh, pretty tidy ball in that first quarter. But there's there's Dooldig, and he's in a bit of pain there at the moment. I think Sherwood did a lot of running and ended up on Salter at the end of the first quarter as well, trying to quiet him down. Here's a chance for Mules to get it to Ruwalt. They're under pressure. Ruwalt just held onto the footy. That was good play, then cleared the area. They did a good bounce here at the base. And it falls to Lomas, who's brutalised over the line by Hinge. That won't worry Brody Lomas. He'll keep coming back, and I wonder whether that man will come back. Let's have a close look, just waiting to get the golden boots off. Back to that in a moment. Mark Soderstrom keeping a close eye on that. Powell has it for the Eagles. Floats a long kick. This might bounce through. It didn't. Just away to the right. And the Eagles looking dangerous against this breeze. They're getting plenty of football right. They are. I'm interested in their midfield matchups. You see there Murphy with Powell, and you also see Fisher going with Vince, both players having an effect on the game. Oh, there's an egg. Two, uh, 12 points, I should say. Two goals, the margin. And Murphy took a strong mark running for him. Holmes, great work, really. That wasn't the greatest of hand pass. Holmes was much better. Here's Kane breaking towards the 50. And the umpire spotted a holding inside 50 off the ball. And Marnie will take the free kick and he'll kick for goal. Shouldn't be a problem with distance with the wind behind him from 45 metres. And Matt Dolder going down into the room. So you'd think they'd have a good look at that and decide yes or no to taping it and sending him out again. And I would judge by the way he's gingerly getting down the stairs that maybe we won't see him for the rest of the day. Gee, it looks oh. bad when you can see it there. It's yeah. uh, egged up, Michael, as you suggested. Yeah, too. Yes, doesn't look good for Matt Doldig. Only his sixth game of the season. Kicked two goals last week against the Double Blues. Here's Marnie kicking for goal. Lovely finish. Beautiful finish. Margin just six points now. Here obviously, come the Bays. Obviously something happened off the footy there. We didn't see what happened to allow Marnie to get that free kick. But it's a great, it's a great conversion with the breeze right back in this game now. Let's go back to it. You watch Marnie. He's not the most fluent kick in his style, but he's very effective and kicks a terrific goal. Good player, that man, Josh Marnie. He'll give you plenty. Back to one straight kick in it. That'll level the scores. Glenelg 4-1 been the tidier on the goal kicking side of it the Eagles have fritted away some opportunities that first term Kirk palm down no free kick to Allen just ducked his head in the tackle there and says come on umpire cop one around the neck Ron Fuller on the phone it's a terrific battle around the centre yeah look at this they're not giving too much third man up it was Marnie all spills out Mules had to go and did Kane can he get some clean football? Treby, Vince, hurriedly on the boot. Grokey from behind, Hinge stood his ground. Good play, handball to Murphy. Fazer away, Ruwalt wants to get on the right. Then finds Kirk. Kirk on the wing, the outer side. We'll look for a long bomb. Coming out is Cranston, can't quite get there. Awkward bounce, McKenzie, as he does so well, to Pedler. And the Eagles are out of trouble, and on the rebound, it's taken by Fiacci. Goes to the corridor. Treby held up well by Kirk. Treby. Bang goes the pass. Low and hard to Salter, who waits. Schwarz is off in a lead, slipping, and goes again. It's set up high. Should be punched away. Is punched away. Vince slips as well. Kane goes after the ball. Schwarz is after him. Kane's got pace. Schwarz was... Uh, lucky with the bounce in the end. Mules has a go at Schwarz, who has a go at Mules, who <laughs> isn't afraid to back down. Let's put it that way. Ambitious by Schwarz, trying to trick the umpire that the ball was still in play there, Michael. They all try it. Fiacci did a 360 and then a fresh air. Murphy, good vision. Ruwalt. 
Ruol goes for Cranston. Maya comes from behind, lovely smashing punch to the front. Simmons in the back. And play on advantage, Cooper. Goes long to the square, pressure on. Coming the other way, I think Sherwood's given away a free kick and he has. He just crashed in. And Brokey will get up. And those model good looks. Just lucky they weren't severely damaged in that collision. Could have meant more work for Sodas though if they were. <laughs> Just have another look. Yeah, we do. Once again, it was Cooper putting the ball in the perfect area. Great courage by Grokey, and he deserves to get a goal there. Very brave. Tacked the ball hard. Got the kick and a good goal. Well deserved for the Eagles and Grokey. Ball started with that uh, Ty Allen free kick in the centre there. Really just... Uh, just watch here. You see, it's great courage. Sure yeah. did what he could, but shouldn't have given a free kick away in that instance. No question about that, but gee, Allen was really untidy uh, in that sequence of play to allow Cooper to kick it forward. And I suppose it's just a little thing sometimes if you're just that fraction of a second late. Even though the Eagles have kicked 5 7, it's been their poor kicking rather than where they were putting the ball. They've used the ball terrific into the hot spots in the forward line, and their entries inside 50 are great. Back out to 12 points in favour of the Eagles. Just that two goal buffer. Kirk is doing plenty of leaping in the ruck and then followed it up. Just to kick out wide. One for the racehorses. Stewart's there. That's James Stewart. And another ball in. McKenzie on Kirkby's a good and interesting matchup. McKenzie started well. And is it in the finals? If he's fit enough, he can certainly go on the ball and do a job as well. Interesting to uh, absentee in there is Stephen Rowe, not in the box this afternoon. I wonder where Stephen might be. Cambo? I imagine he might be overcalling the uh, Adelaide Hawthorne game, might Yes. Yeah. Boundary throw in, Ron Fuller. Just to hurl it in. Smith. All thumped away by Dabrowski. Close to the line. Mules will want to keep this in. Does so with a twinkle toes and then just squeezed the kick out. And was out of bounds and came as Justin Sicalella just looks on with a chuckle. I thought he might have just scraped that one in. <laughs> he was hopeful, but Sicka knew what was going on. He's a, a wise man. Brett Backwell just taking his seat for a while as the Eagles try and work it from the back. Treby's found some space in the corridor and can go. And he didn't like what he saw. Dummy to round one. Off to McKenzie. McKenzie looks up. Oh, and he trips himself up. Gee, I thought that cricket pitch looked nice and smooth and ready for summer, but obviously there was a bump in it. McKenzie went down. And we'll get a ball up inside the centre square. See McKenzie Petrenko actually. Uh, oh, he trips himself up, as you said, Neil. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Trinko, a little bit in it. A little bit pigeon toed, perhaps McKenzie. His block, tackle front on by Fiachi. Crowd wants a free kick, none coming. Just back to McKenzie. I saw him before walking around as if he had somewhat of a limp. I know he was in a moon boot earlier this season for an Achilles or a foot problem. I think that's part of his gait. He's got an unusual walking style you'll find now. Maxi Walker would be proud of that, wouldn't he? <laughs> Allen right taking the ground, umpire says I'll have it right in front of the grandstand and the Eagles supporters centre wing and centre stage umpire Colin Rouston coming in. Gee, that's a great tackle. He goes in there, young Stuart. Stuart Fiaschi's last two tackles are fantastic. Here we go, another stoppage to be won. And as you were, start again. Ty Allen's really beefed it up in the midfield. He's the one that's really showing some solid aggression for Glenelg, trying to lift them. Flicks over the back to Jarrett, who squeezed it out to Vince, who marked in front of his face, which was a terrific take. He kicks it high. Salter's in front. He normally gets these. Ball knocked away by Sherwood. Willoughby there. Willoughby out to Holmes. Can he keep it in? Fairclough did pretty well to drive him to the line. And he just ran out of room, a boundary throw in, and Ron Fuller watches on. Yeah, there's not much in this game at the moment, but I think there's great signs for Eagles going into the finals. They've been tough and hard, and they've got a nice bit of polish about them and some players to come back in. Yeah, no doubt about that. But Chief Glenelga really stepping it up as well. Willoughby just fell over and low masses. All over him like a rash. And another ball up. It's really tight at the moment. 
How many goals have we had in this term? A couple to Glenelg through McConnell and Marnie, and a single to Grokey. So just inching away at the moment. Lindsay, Fairclough, finally got the handle, and that's clever play. To screw it back over the body. Willoughby should have taken that. Sicilella just ducked the head and went in after the footy. Was good enough to get it to Lindsay, but illegally, said the umpire. That was a throw. And it'll go to the former Sydney Swan in Josh Willoughby, who spent a few seasons there and now is back at his home at the Bay. Spent three for no games of league football with the Swans. A history of injury. Here's Kane, former Hawk. Ruwalt dives back in, no success. Now Smith slipped out a hand pass. Marnie just belted it forward, low mass. Oh, lovely little sidestep. Oh, now uh, Simmons is by himself at a half forward. Nice kick inside 50. Grokey wants to get it on. He's got Treby running. Treby gets a bad, bad, bad <laughs> bounce. Oh, it was set up. He knew he couldn't half volley it. He had to wait. And it just went away from him. It was. You see Grokey here. There was no one up forward. And Treby was running down into space. Did it well. Timed his run well with the ball bounced the wrong way for him. Yes, that was uh, pretty unlucky. Rudolph should have taken that. Was good enough to recover. About got m just about to get mown down and then got the kick away. Allen slipped at the Ruwald. Glenelg go inside 50. Kirk's just on the treadmill. And let's see how he goes here. Riding him is higher. Kirk keeps it in front of him. Good contest that. Higher stayed in the contest. Dived on the footy. Umpire Day says, give it to me. That's a pretty good contest. They were both in the contest and out of it. And a ball up in shoes. Both very competitive. And that's what this whole game's been about today. Terrific contest. 15 minutes gone. Quite day with a good bounce. Lindsay knocking it down. A lot of players around this footy. Ruwalt kept it in. It drifts away and out of bounds for a boundary throw in. 15 and a half gone and this game just not, just pretty tight at the moment, Rod, isn't it? Just it is no one's been able to really break it away, although the Bays have kicked a couple. Contest. It's interesting to see what the Nels do here at this uh, restart of play. There's a lot of space in their goal score forward of this contest. If they hit it forward, they're a real chance. Well, they did hit it forward to Ruwell, who just found that there was just a roadblock called Lindsay blocking his way. <laughs> Scary roadblock too. He's a big bear, isn't he? He is. He's been a fantastic player in this competition for probably seven or eight years now. There, the big paw goes up and now he follows up on the ground. And we'll get another ball up, another stoppage. They're just grinding away both sides at the moment. It's no knockout blows being delivered, just a lot of little jabs here and there. I think Lindsay's measure at this footy club is in his professionalism and the way he goes about his... McConnell, sharp angle. They did get it forward of the play rod, and it opened up for McConnell, and gee whiz, he's good. The sharp shooter. Yeah, I was really interested to watch how they did set up and both boundary throw-ins throw there and ball up. So they kept space in front, as you can see when we go to it here. Quick handball by Ruwald and McConnell in space because he had no one running at him. That was good. Well set up, well constructed, terrific goal. Eight possessions, three marks to McConnell today. Yeah, thanks, Chris. We'll uh, just watch him with interest in the finals. McConnell is up to 60 goals now in the season. So that's a terrific effort for a player of his size. Kicked a couple in this term. Free kick in the centre. will go to the Eagles. It'll go to Paul Lindsay. Running at the back was Vince, but back was aware of that. Doesn't kick very often, Paul Lindsay, but he's forced to do so now. At the back, Sherwood will thump it away. Simmons is right there. The kick, looking for Schwarz. He won't get there. Oh, oh lovely mark. That's terrific play by Sugars. Just floating across with no... Well, there's a free kick in the meantime. Goes to Rudolph, and poor old Sugars has caught the battering. And yeah, we'll just go footy. back to this. You see Sugars, great courage. Sweet by Sugars, but Rudolph gets the free kick. <laughs> with his red nose. Taken by Smith. <laughs> Kicks down the line, looking for Kirk at the back higher. They had a real scuffle on the other side. Allen thought about giving it to Kane, then thought better of it and got it to Cranston forward of the play. Cranston tries to get it to Marnie. In comes Kane. Intelligent paddle away to Marnie. Marnie shoots for goal and doesn't miss. He's got a couple. Josh Marnie, but how good was the work 
on the other side by Trevor Cranston. Wow, and it was ben fantastic. Kane. Yeah, Kane in particular as well. Selfless acts are going to tell the difference in this game, and he did well to just tap it in front. Just going to watch it now. You see that there's Marnie kicking the goal after Kane pushed the ball into his area. His teammate slipped over, or opponent slipped over, and Marnie made the most of it. He's working himself nicely into this game and into a final series. Four goals to one in this quarter for the Bays, and they trail by just the one point. 17 was the margin at quarter time. And again, Lindsay just stands there in the big light tower, palms it down. Jared somehow got his foot to ball, scrambled it a few metres forward. Fisher was good. Mules distributed well to Sugars, and a delicate little kick around the corner floats out on the full. Fisher is an outstanding player. He's working around these stoppages, and his selfless acts have been terrific as well. Injury interrupted season last year for... Brave Luke Powell, Fisher. terrific mark. So Powell with Schwarz on the lead. It'll carry too far, you'd think, of coming across Kirk. Gee, I reckon, Rod, the, the two Ruckman, Kirk and Cranston, and their mobility has been good. A very positive point for the Bays this afternoon as Sherwood shows some good mobility and goes back to the captain in Mules, who drops it short for Kane. Yeah, you're right there, Neil. What they're doing, the two backmen are pushing into the hole in front of Schwartz at full forward. That's working well for them. Lindsay needs to get there, get up there and get dangerous. Here's Lindsay, won't catch Willoughby. The wall of the wisp just ducked around got it to rudolph what's he doing there he's dragged his opponent down the ground and what a great delivery so it was run run rudolph and he got it off nicely to mcconnell but what's happened there kirk has actually covered for rudolph and signaled him to go forward and there he is rudolph in space his opponent didn't run with him and who's he found none other than the main goal kicker for glenelg this year with 62 today going for his third goal so Lindsay goes off the ground as McConnell lines up and it just fades away. He's got a great angle on that. He started it perhaps a little too far right. Isn't he laconic in his style of kicking? Confident too. Yeah. So big Schwarz comes off. Mark, he's, uh, they've bottled him up pretty well, the big number 11, haven't they? Yeah, Rudolph's done very well just running him out of the goal square. So uh, Ron Ford is looking to mix that up a bit now. Sigalella back on the ground, so Rudolph will have to deal with the skipper. And Salter's gone to the goal square. He's one out inside 50 for the Eagles now. Yeah, that's not a bad, uh, that's not a bad effort if they can isolate him. Sicalella hugs the line. Trevi was going to let it go for a second. Then took the mark. Jarrett, will they go into the pocket? The lead comes from Solder. He squares it up. Can Sherwood get there? Punches away. Well done. He's having a purple patch, Sherwood. Hinge got it to Kane. Kane's kick looking for Marnie. That's a wonderful knock away by Petrenko. Out of bounds. He's a talented young player showing his defensive skills and knocked it out of bounds. There he is. He's a lot of tape on him at the moment, uh, Jared Petrenko, as Fisher yeah. takes a rest right on the bench. Big job at the moment, Michael, for Petrenko. He's looking after Marnie, who's kicked two goals this quarter. Wow. Petrenko, pretty unlucky not to join Brad Evert in the All-Australian Under-18 side after a pretty good campaign earlier in the year. Yeah, you learn a bit today, Mark, running around with a, a player of Josh Marnie's experience, a 2004 Premiership player, and there's Holmes taking a spell down on the boundary. I've been impressed with the way he's gone about it as well today. Yeah, he's been good, the young fella. There's Kirkby kicking into the pocket. McConnell can't get there. It rolls out of bounds. Redden's the man that's looking after McConnell at the moment. There he is. Well, Redden's having trouble with McConnell, you'd have to say, in this quarter. So we'll just see how that pans out. But uh, Ronnie Fuller might be looking to make a move if McConnell keeps up his good form. Time on second term. And with the breeze, they've made good ground, Glenelg, in this quarter. There's that open space. Michael and Neil and for Glenelg to go forward if they can win the ball. They haven't on this occasion. Dabrowski kicks smothered. Smith just knocked it forward now. Pedler to the boundary line. Professional work from Joey Pedler. Joey's boots are doing plenty too, boys. They're fairly bright, aren't they? Yep. As I said uh, some time ago, it's uh, unusual to see a black pair of boots these days. So Glenelg using two Ruckman here and neither of them managed to get the tap. Accidentally back well to Lomas. And then down the line it went for Vince who showed good hands. Out in front of the eyes, Bernie Vince holds up play. 
quite a journey a couple of years ago playing for CMS Crows. Couldn't even get a game in reserves here at Woodville. His first game was against Glenelg when he debuted late in the season. In his debut year, he played very well. Oh, gee, that kick carried Willoughby. Couldn't shut down Redden, who's now away. Goes for Sicilella in front of Rudolph. And Rudolph was not going to make the same mistake and gave up 25. And that has slowed the approach of the Eagles. A little bit costly there. The Eagles were off and running. Sikalala handballing the ball to Jared, but forced to take the 25 now. Sika has to reconsider. Is that the rule, Just Rod? Do they have to take it? Yeah, they have to. They have to. Once, because the umpire blows time out to, uh, to give it. But the problem there was, I reckon there was about 15. <laughs> so now Treby drops it in short. Vince leads up. Waits, looks. A lot of Bays players back inside 50 trying to crowd it up and they're successfully doing it at the moment. Remember he's kicking into the breeze as well so I he don't is. think he's going to carry this ball 60 metres. But he's a very smart player. He'll do the right thing. What that is I'm not sure just yet. He's just going to pop it up to the top of the square. Have a fly and there's Grokiewell unopposed in the end and Sugars took it away. That was a bit of luck. And Ruwalt signalled to Sugars, well, gee, I was free on the outlet. Instead, he went for the boundary far side of the ground. Let's just have another look. And Grokey really was unopposed, should have taken it. Just dropped it. Yeah, he'll rue that miss, Grokey. Ty Allen having a spell down there, Mark. Yeah, the angry little ant. He's, uh, look, he works pretty hard. Did a super job, I think, uh, a year ago. He kept Matty Slade to 10 possessions at the bay. And Mark Micken uses him very well on and off the bench as, as a stopper. Very unobtrusive, but certainly gets the job done. He's not the only tie at the moment either, so he's all tied up on the scoreboard too. Yes, looking beautiful, up. Rob. Oh, look, he's, he's a magician, a wordsmith. He's got one in the box here. Thank, thank goodness we have. The browse has got the free kick, and this will take one of his best kicks to pop it through. We know he's got a pretty reasonable leg, and he'll need to punch it all the way here. Dabrowski from 45. Plenty of elevation. It's coming back. It's coming around. It drifts away at the last moment and thumped through. But the Eagles hit the front by the solitary behind. There's two different kicks into the forward line, boys. You see Dabrowski have a shot where he probably wasn't going to get a goal, and you see Vince just pop the ball at the top of the square where they nearly took a mark. Two different Smith. ways going inside. Gee, that was good from Smith. Gave it off to Holmes, who fumbled. Pedler came in, he'll hold it in. Yeah, good experience play there from Pedler. You could see straight away, he knew he was surrounded. Hold it in, wait for the stoppage, let's go again. Been a fantastic defender for the Eagles. Just wants to play footy for the club. Is rewarded with a premiership last year. Just a one-point margin. And ball again tied up inside the centre square. Dabrowski will go against Kirk. And in comes Jarrett, just thumps it forward. Rudolph fumble. Treby in the pack got it out. Sherwood read it well, went to the boundary, umpire said, deliberate. Oh, I didn't disguise that one very well, Paul Sherwood. Yeah, we're going back to this. Had to be a free kick, didn't it? Sherwood just tapped it out of bounds. That was his intent, and the umpire saw it, obviously. So Salter now can square it, does so to Vince. Maybe just on distance here, you'd think, Bernie Vince. OK, let's see what he does here, Crossy. He can either put it at the top of the square if he thinks he's out of his distance, or if he thinks he can kick it, I think he will kick the goal if he has a shot for goal. Otherwise, he'll pop it at the top of the square. As I said, he's a very smart player. He knows what he's got at his disposal. Well, he thinks he can make it, I think. He's going to have a crack. And he started it right. It's drifting. And in the end, he was a metre out in his judgment. He was. His judgment's off. And I think he needs to have a good hard look at himself. <laughs> It'd be pretty good today. Kick it's the goal and fantastic. Behind, lead up, and leading up. Here's Rudolph who measured a lovely pass to McConnell earlier in the quarter. Mules. Over the top, Rudolph again and Ooh. he's away. He loves to run this bloke. Kicks it long, just kicked to a contest though. Treby, just cleverly out in front, couldn't grab it. Stewart comes in, he gets some... About three of them mob him, and then one of them got him over the shoulder. He's 
Murphy. Good attack on the ball by Young Stewart. He took what was coming and uh, earned a free kick. Half time at Woodville Oval in a real arm wrestle. Got a high scoring game. Both coaches trying to work out how they can break this game open, but it's half time. And the Eagles, 5 10 40, lead Glenelg 6 2. Campbell to half time. With the goal kickers here, we go to the Eagles. They're all single goal kickers in Cooper, Grokey, Vince, Simmons, and Salter. Marnie and McConnell have been uh, lively up forward for Glenelg with two each. They spread it around a bit as we look at this. Uh, gee, it reflects an even game. The interesting note there, of course, the 20 odd more handballs than the Tigers have had. Yeah, every indicator says that it's a close game and the margin is only two points. It's been really tight and it's hard to gain an advantage in this game so far. Just from the boundary, it's so does uh, Matt Doldig. Look, he didn't have much of the ball and now he really has a problem with his ankle. Yes, he certainly won't get any more of the ball today and possibly for the rest of the year. He uh, just seen the marking contest goes up. It looks uh, pretty innocuous. They rolled over onto the ankle. Now, uh, when they got the boot off, when he got his way over to the sideline, that had blown up very, very quickly. Plenty of bleeding there. He's been assessed down in the room and look, there are some pretty grave concerns about the fitness of his ankle at the moment. Uh, They've, uh, well, in fact, possibly the worst case scenario is that there's some pretty serious ligament damage and a possible break. Best case scenario is it's a uh, very, very bad sprain and he'd be out for a couple of weeks anyway. So uh, he's just um, ducked off. We can see him there on the crutches about to hop in the car and has just ducked off to hospital moments ago for that scan. So things not looking very good. Now, the big problem for the Bays besides losing him is that... Uh, it lo lo loosens up a defender for the Eagles. Uh, a lot more pressure now on guys like McConnell and Kirkby and also Jeff Smith up forward. James Seller, a player who has been playing in the twos, but he didn't play with a quad, so uh, no chance probably of him coming up. So it does leave the Bays a little vulnerable up front. Thanks for that. Soda's quickly around the grounds and Port Adelaide giving West another fearful hammering. That time, and then Norwood and South a bit closer, 11 points. Obviously, down at Mulunga Rock, uh, you would have experienced that. There'd be a fair breeze to one end of the ground. Yeah, South right in that game. And look, I think Norwood have won two of their last 10 games, so they're not playing much better than South are at the moment. <laughs> no, no, it's been disappointing. I guess a disappointing finish for the legs because they were right in it, weren't they? Well, they have early, I guess they were, but I've been really disappointed in their last yeah, 10 games. I don't think they've been doing much at all, haven't improved at all, really. And how do you see this one going? It's pretty tight at the moment, just a couple of points to margin. I think the advantage might go with the Eagles, just for their experience. Uh, no bias in that. You, no, you no, were yeah, on the yeah. Eagles coaching bench. I was, but I just think, you know, they've got players who've been playing together for six or seven years. They're used to tight games. They're used to this sort of finals pressure. And Glenelg is just starting to get used to it. It's going to stand them in good stead for the finals, Glenelg, but the Eagles might just get away with it today. Is that finals pressure seems to have come a week early for the Bays. Just about set for a start in the second half. Of course, we remember last year the Bays were dumped out of it in round 23 against South Adelaide and South Adelaide went on to actually win a final. Let's see what happens this afternoon. Here's Michael Maney. Yeah, and the Eagles collect the least amount of possessions of the competition, but they use what they get pretty well. Third quarter of round 23 and the umpire will call it back and will ball it up again as happens so often. Bernie what? Vince having a chuckle. Soda. Well, I was going to say, round 23 hasn't been good for the Bays. Last year, Jeff Smith broke his ankle in that game. They had to win to make the finals. And this year, it looks like Doldig may have done a similar thing. Yeah, and Fisher uh, was on his way back from injury and couldn't quite get back for that game and played in the twos, I think. Treby over the top. Good handball to the run of Jared. jared has got to get around. He does successfully. Away to Cooper. Cooper loads up from downtown. And just misses away to the right-hand side. That breeze looks like it might have worked its way up a little bit uh, at half-time, so does. Well, Michael, uh, if anything, it certainly hasn't died down. And I think we mentioned probably conservative estimate worth a couple of goals at least. And we saw that in the first term when Glenelg did trail by a few goals and squared the ledger by half-time. So I think uh, Glenelg will be looking to just keep the Eagles at bay this term. And if they can, they'd have a good chance against the breeze. But that's probably their best-case scenario today. A contested pack mark there from Kirk. And they work at the centre wing to Kirk B. And just the wind carrying that out of bounds on the full. Would the other Kirk be Kirk A then? He is high up. Drops it inside for Treby. And there are a pair of players in the goal square behind Treby, and that's it. Everybody else forward of the ball in this situation. Treby drops it in short. 
And now leading out was Salter. That was a target, and Salter takes it nicely low. Just a little too much pace for the veteran Sherwood, who gets up very gingerly after that. She beautiful kick out in front. We just go back to it, and in space, leading up Salter. Terrific lead, had space in front, perfectly executed kick. Just wonder how his knee is after that, because that ground, as we've said today various times, very hard out there, and Salter hitting it pretty hard. And has he made the same mistake? No, he has. He's just managed to drift it inside the post for a goal. So he goes one better than Cooper. That's a beautiful kick by Salter. He really is a, a player to be reckoned with. I like seeing him down in the goal square where he is now. Schwartz has moved out. You see, it was Stewart who got the ball. Just a nice lead. Put it out in front and finished with a good goal. Interestingly enough, Lindsay, Powell and Lomas start on the bench for the Eagles. So they've got some firepower in midfielders to come onto the ground later in the game. He's got to work out that tricky breeze and how to kick goals, but we know this man, Nick Salter, can kick them from anywhere. The Eagles back out to a nine-point lead, courtesy of the Salter goal. Back in the centre, Murphy to Fisher. Lanelle tacking their way up. Allen, that's a strong mark in front of Stewart. Stewart lets him go. Allen is pretty fit at the moment. Just waits on it. Some numbers getting back from the Eagles and they've just about manned everybody up and now Allen's forced to kick high and kick long in the middle of the pack. Oh, McConnell just about sharked it. Redden luckily got it away to Vince and then Vince goes to Jarrett. Now a bit of work going on after that kick by Vince and McConnell's in a bit of strife from a couple of Eagles. Redden's in there. Vince doesn't look too perturbed. Jarrett finds Stewart on the outer side. Kicks to the wing. Mules knocks away for Glenel. Taken by Kane. That's good work. Whistle's blown. And there's a, a real big scuffle up forward. And McConnell's right in the middle of it. And you wouldn't want to get reported now. Oh, it's ridiculous. And you see Bernie Vince was in there too. McConnell was trying to get him going. But Bernie's smart enough to walk away from that. He's got too much at stake. So the Eagles will take it inside 50 through Simmons. No, they won't. They'll go to Fairclough who can take it inside 50. Cooper was loose. He missed him by a long way. It's almost as though he saw the lead there. He saw Kirk in the hole and has kicked it straight to him. Kirk now has a decision to make and takes his time making it. He wants somebody on this side of the ground, decides to go high and long. Treby should be too strong for Ruwalt, who actually did pretty well, Ruwalt. Toad forward. And still trapped in there. Marnie was in there and came out and in the end back off. Has to surrender the ball. Now Ron Fuller just making a change. He actually had uh, Dennis Redden one out in the square with Justin McConnell. Perhaps probably thought uh, Redden would be a bit vulnerable. So Zach High has gone there and uh, Redden's moved up to take Marnie. I think that's a smart move. Just looked like Redden was struggling a little bit earlier in the game when he was one out in the square with McConnell. He's so clever. Dabrowski and Sicilella gets forward of the play, but it was out of bounds before he could gather it in. Nine points to margin. And again, a period of play where both sides just throwing the odd jab, but no knockout blows. Mules, back well, has to be precise, put it into the path of Sherwood. Pursued by Salter, we just got around, hand pass dangerous. Kane, now he can gather. Not a bad kick, sets it for contested play. Sugars did well, so did Willoughby and Holmes. And now Ruwalt's clear, here go the Bays, their supporters rise, lovely kick, Smith takes it. McConnell wants it back in the goal square. Smith sets it up, McConnell can have a leap. Comes to the front, nicely gathered. And they'll go the other way Petrinko. through Petrinko. His kick just didn't have the carry to Fiachi. Now it's two on one hinge. He got it off to Murphy, sat up nicely for him. Murphy to half forward with a kick, it was good. Oh, he spent it before he actually had it. And now it comes the other way again for the Eagles. And they have numbers this side, Schwarz can take off. Inside 52, three available. And he goes to Dabrowski. Sicilella's short and out in front of goal. Simmons is sitting. He's still there. He's still there. And it's sat up. 
and just faded away for the minor score. Gee, that was disappointing. They had numbers and then numbers and then too many. To I don't think Dabrowski from. actually had a shot for goal then. He oh. just sort of popped it up. And if he had had a real shot of that left post, it would have gone okay. through. Bad play, I would have thought, by Smith up forward then. He, he either had time to go back and have a shot or set something up. He played on quickly and kicked to a contest out wider than the corridor he was in. He needs to learn from that. Have a look at the video, I reckon. And McConnell had to fly from behind. Yep. Kane tried to keep it low into the breeze. Flicks over the back. Pedler. Sky ball. Oh, Lindsay should have taken that. Soldar got it to Cooper. Cooper looks at them and misses. She sold to unrewarded there. That was brilliant the way he uh, held the ball in, got it out to Cooper in space. We'll have another look at that now. You see Salta just held it in, provided the, the shepherd. Cooper knew straight away. Out of luck, I think he said, and uh, he missed it. 11 points to margin. One goal, three for the term with the breeze. The Eagles. Mules has been rewarded with the mark. I thought he had it clean. Benny Mules, who won a male medal playing in the southeast, chips it in short for Backwell. Numbers on the far side of the ground. Backwell runs, carries, gives it to Rudolph, takes a mark. And quickly on, Sugars and then Kane, and this boy can run, and he does so. And nobody comes at him, keep going, and nobody's son. chasing. Keep going. He can go all the way. Manassa. He gets to 25 and kicks a point. She just took maybe one stride too many. Isn't that exciting to see players who run with the footy? See Kane here, he's taking his third, his fourth bounce. Looks again. Five bounces. I reckon if he hadn't have waved the crowd on, he might have kicked that goal. It didn't matter, here's one. Just amazing stuff. And Murphy, I think, is the man who's kicked the goal. We were watching the replay of Ben Kane, but it's just sensational play. Or is it young Holmes has kicked it, so... I reckon it was Holmes. Let's go back to it now. Murphy handballs into Holmes. In space, in the corridor. Nice work, boys. Good goal to Glenelg, and they're staying in touch. Holmes on debut, his first goal. Centre breaks one all this quarter. It is such a tight game. The four points in it, Kirk, he got it down and Alan. the grunt man and Allen just trying to bust through a pack. It was never going to happen. Very, very interesting stage of the contest. Remember if uh, the Bays will be in touch about that goal, two goal margin at three quarter time, I think they'd be pretty confident coming home with the breeze. Interesting. Sicolello with some footwork on Fisher, who objected to it. Yeah, I sure. Mm. Had a look at that. He's got to be careful with that sort of thing. With nothing on the end of this game, if it is only a two-goal margin at three-quarter time, it probably gets the Eagles an opportunity to try something they could try in the finals and maybe play a couple back, maybe just slow a game down so they get the chance to do something like that in the finals. Let's have another look just behind the play here with Sicolella. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, you've got to be careful, don't you? It's just silly by Sicolella. Here's Ruwalt breaking away using his pace and goes inside 50. Holmes almost got rid of his man. Marnie was brilliant below the knees. Ruwalt can kick a goal. Smothered. Well done by Jared. They still force it forward, the Tigers. Smith trying to break away. Gee's big and tough and strong. But even he has his limits. He does. He worked hard in there, but he was up against it against some strong Eagles tackles. Their tackling has been terrific today. Bays get it forward again. Petrinko taken. Gone. Holding the ball. What a magnificent tackle from Holmes. Gee, the young man meant that at just 18 years of age on debut. Have a look at this. Yeah, let's have a look at it. He's been terrific, Holmes. And he tackles Petrenko, who's probably the quickest bloke on the ground, yeah. and has been rewarded. A lot of pressure on the young fellow, though. He's straight in front of goals. Would never have had pressure like this, certainly at this level. So we'll see how he handles it. Played in the under-18 nationals for South Australia this season from West Gambia. Prolific Southeast recruiting zone for Glenelg, isn't it? 
it's starting to come through now. He's a lot of hard work put in over the uh, past few years. Here's Holmes. And it's the post. Almost hits the very, very top of the post. It's the pressure we're talking about, boys. Ten metres out, virtually straight in front. Just watch it again. Feeling the pressure out Josh Marnie, telling him what to do. Good advice, I'm sure. But just poked at it, and he'll learn from that, as will Petrenko. Yes, he'll take the positive out of that with a brilliant tackle. And there's Smith with a brilliant mark. I want to see him make a good decision here, because I'm not sure he always does. And I don't think he did that. No. Stewart thought it was all right. Stewart, so Smith's got some work to do with his disposal and his uh, decision-making, I reckon. Treby about to get run down by Holmes. Kick looking for Powell, which just had a bit too much on it. Into assist with Simmons. Cooper. Breeze catches hold of that football. Sold but well done on the half volley by Sherwood. Needed the release and did to Kane. Kane wants to run. Squeeze the handball to Ruwalt. Ruwalt got around. Been impressed with his last 10 minutes or so. Here's Holmes again. In a bit of space. Kicks forward. Out in front of McConnell. Oh, his foot skills apart from hitting the post just a moment ago from Young Holmes has been pretty good and very slick and McConnell will have a shot. I don't think he, the one he missed was about his kicking so much. It was probably just the pressure at the moment, but he's he's uh, shown a lot today, a lot to like about him. Talked about Jeff Smith's selection and what he does with the ball going forward. How do you compare that? With yeah, well, you've got an 18-year-old kid who just obviously knows the game. He seems like a natural footballer and uses the ball well. Big future ahead of him. Speaking of natural footballer, here's a natural goal kicker. And it's just got the legs. And the Bays are in front. That's almost the kick of the day so far, I reckon. He has just belted that. It's gone straight. It's got the distance. Let's go back and have a look. You watch here. We look for some good decision-making. Ruwold. Holmes sizes it up. Just a good kick. He just threaded the needle and McConnell's kick was absolutely brilliant. And he's kicked his third goal and is a thorn in the side of the Eagles at the moment. Well, Nelg have had three marks inside 50 today, boys. McConnell, two of those. They got back to level at the 20-minute mark of the second term. But this is the first time the Bay's been in front. Ball trapped in the smaller of the centre circles. We'll get the secondary bounce or throw up if you know. We'll get a bounce. Umpire obviously has aspirations to the AFL. Oh, nicely done by Murphy out of the middle. Tumble, punt, awful kick, finger breaker. Goes to ground. Redden quickly. Nice. Got the hands free. Stewart did the same. They put it forward. Here comes Ruwalt charging through. Took the bump. And wait on the umpire. Too high. Too high, said the umpire. Well, Ruwalt takes the kick. Puts it up high. Smith's in the middle of the pack. McConnell had a fly. Now Redden. Again. Gee, that was good work. A couple of times. Got the hands free. Same with Cooper. Now McKenzie. Waited the hand pass nicely. They get it down to half forward. Carries over the back. Hinge. Fakes. Hand pass back to Sugars. Oh, well done by Lomas. Trapped him. Sugars goes for the boundary. Hinge will go down the line or out the back. He was very clever. He was very clever except for the kick. Now Cooper. Trapped by Fisher. He kept his feet. They've got runners on the oh, far great side. Handle, Here comes Kane. Kane can go to Holmes. Holmes can run. And he'll go short. And just beaten that time. McConnell was good enough to get it away from higher. Now he can go back to goal. Take a bounce. Kick a goal. And he's done it. Oh, Justin McConnell. That was something special. Key. Holmes McConnell, it's got a ring to it, doesn't it? I'm sure the Glenelg people would like hearing it. And when, yeah. we, when we look at the replay, I guarantee he felt the hand on the Guernsey and delayed bouncing the ball yeah. until he was clear. Oh, he's a smart player. We watch it here, it might not have been the best option, but McConnell is just so good. And one-on-one, -on -one, feels it there, as you said, has the bounce. He's never going to miss the goal. He plays with rare confidence. And uh, Glenelg now in the lead by nine points, the Eagles need to find something. Since quarter time, McConnell's had five kicks for four goals. Yeah, he's been the game breaker a few times on ABC television match of the day, no question. He really does have a good feel for the game and steps up to the plate and wants to do it. I'm just wondering what might have happened if he had started inside 50 in the first quarter. Yeah. 
Here go the Eagles. Simmons, Uran Mules, Ruwalt, Fisher. Been finally got the handle. Fisher. Yeah, he has been terrific. Backwell's not probably had one of his most prolific days, but he just keeps racking them up. You don't even know he's getting them. Kane, he's been a man to break the lines to Rudolph, who's run off Swars. Rudolph kept it low. Good kick. Sugars, his commitment has been there today, no doubt about that. Into Kane, who's playing on him? Kicks it long at the back. Kirkby working his way in. Well done, Dabrowski. Willoughby needed to be clean, got a foul bounce. In comes Jared. Redden, so the Eagles will be out of trouble. No mark, it wasn't 15. Vince just with the outside of the boot. Lovely kick finds Stewart. Stewart draws a man to hire. The 1 2 back to Stewart. Eagles go long. That ball's got a lot of carry on it, but it didn't go to anyone. Rudolph just backed himself, left his man over the top. Sherwood inboard Sugars. They're working their way forward. The Bays, they've got something going here at the moment. Sherwood and lets himself down with a kick. Oh, Kirkby just got a terrible bounce. Smith just ditches Pedler. Ball just jars loose. Smith somehow kept it in. Pretty good play by the number 12. Up looking for McConnell. He's got it again. Gee, I, I can't help. And he milks 25. Yeah. Uh, Hire's a little bit out of his depth. I know we probably called for a change on... A change uh, on McConnell, but I think really McKenzie's the man for him. Don't know about Hire at this stage. And he just said, come on, mate. Come on, Zachy. Come back 25, son, and I'll boot this one through for number five. Yeah, look, he's been all over higher in this quarter. I really think time for McKenzie. Get McKenzie back there. He's the experienced player. Great goal, McConnell. Let's not take anything away from him. In the one-on-one, -on -one, he was just too good. And he's having a fair effect on this game. He's kicked his fifth. And we'll just see how this uh, happened here. Straight over the big fella. Good tackle by Smith. Gee, that's uh, World Championship wrestling stuff, yeah. boy. It all looked like it was out of bounds though, Michael. All of it wasn't out though, was it? All of it's got to be Actually, out. Right? I think only two-thirds of it was out from here. <laughs> uh, Rocker, while you're terrific. making that uh, decision there on the ball yep. out, I can tell you that Zach High has made his way to the boundary line. He's been dragged. Dennis Redden back to full back. He's uh, one out in the square against McConnell. One Interesting. On the He'll recall this ball. Interesting balancing act you've got though with Hire going to the bench. McConnell grows in confidence from having a player dragged off him. You've got to balance up. Is he doing too much damage? Do we give him more confidence? Well, Redden was on him earlier, so he took Redden off and put Hire on him, and he's had a birthday. I still think maybe McKenzie's the man. Although these young kids are getting an opportunity in a game that there's no points on the end of, really. Cooper has the job on Kane, who's been brilliant this quarter off half back. And this time made a good selection. Short came back, although they want to run again. Fisher's on the far side. He thought about it, then didn't go to him. Again made a good selection. Fisher kept running. Allen has it. Fisher's loose. Inside 50, he can travel. And can he travel the distance? He kicks from 40. He kicks it up. Oh, magnificent. What great running from Adam Fisher out there on the far side of the ground. You know, he is so worthy, Fisher, to kick a goal like that. His input in this game has been nothing short of sensational around the middle. We just watch here. He's made some space. He's worked hard, obviously has a good motor on him. He's run down, kicked a goal. So worthy. He's been selfless all day, helping his teammates. He gets a bit of reward and can celebrate. Great work, Fisher. Ben Kane, nine possessions this quarter, boys. 5-2 to 1-3. The Bays have broken it open in the third term. And as Chris Kendall said, Ben Kane has been terrific. In yeah. goes Backwell. And Fisher's been sensational as well. Just need a note that's into the breeze. We said it's probably a three-goal breeze. They've kicked that uh, score into the breeze. Yeah. Real question popped here to the Eagles by Glenelg. Kane with another possession. Ruwalt, fearless, goes to ground. Treby's all over him like a rash. Umpire Ralston calls for a ball up. 21 minutes gone. They the play by the Bays. Sorry, Michael. They play a little bit wide of each other, Treby and Ruwalt, both having an effect. Ruwalt, particularly in this quarter, has been rather dominant for Glenelg after Treby was early for the Eagles. Slowing it down at the moment. I think that's what the Eagles need to do, slow it down a bit, but they've got that breeze, so they still need to find that mix between slowing it down and scoring. 
They're under threat at the moment. Fisher, third man up, Mules. Just working so cohesively with hand and foot. Hinge, who's won some important ball, and so too this man, Jeff Smith. Okay, let's really see his lifted it. Making. That's better. Yeah, that's good. Back well. He's got to get around Jarrett. And Jarrett can't quite hold on to him. He's a slippery customer. Good foot pass. Holmes. He's found himself in space again. And he'll find McCall again. Oh, it's deja vu. Well, it is. Three out of three. This is uh, this is very exciting, isn't it? The young fellow, he's just done very well. McConnell, he seems to have a great understanding with him. But when, you, when you've got space like this and McConnell on the lead, not many defenders can stop that. He's going for goal number six. Justin McConnell takes it out to 27 points. And, goodness me, he's, uh, he's made a bit of a shank of it. That was his normal confident approach. So I would have thought he'd kick that goal, but he's never looked like it Oops. unless he left the boot. And the thing about that is, it's nowhere near the goals. <laughs> it's, it's a shocker. Kenzie brings it back in, benefit of the breeze, carries the pack. Sicilella tried to give it to Jared, was pushed in the back by Fisher, it'll come back. Fisher anticipated the hand pass, but then stumbled and straight into the back of Jared. Yeah. Jared came across from Williamstown in the VFL to play here in the SANFL. Oh, hey, shaky old I kick. Go. Fortunately, McKenzie only had about 150 metres of space. Now he runs. Well aware he had Peddler outside him. Drew the man. Peddler's kick has to be good. Sherwood came and closed down Salter. Well done, Paul Sherwood, the veteran. Has had a great game today. He's worked really hard. When they last played finals in 99, Paul Sherwood was there. In fact, I think it was his first season at the Bay. He thought, here we go, finals, you play it every year at Tigerland. Hasn't quite been the case. Not this century. No, certainly not with the Tigers on the other side of the border either. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor Cranston off, taking a seat. Kirk on, and he'll be opposed to Dabrowski. Kirk well rested, you'd think. And a good backhand down, follows up well. Look at that. Tried to get the hand pass forward. Fiachi taking a ground by block. How did he get that out? Umpire Colin Ralston satisfied that he couldn't. So Glenel, the only team to have a draw with the Eagles in the history of Woodville West Torrens. And their last win here. Round 19, 1999, as we said at the start, Rod, that's a lovely omen, isn't it? The last time they played yep. finals, the Bays, was the last time they actually won here at the Woodville Oval. It sure is. Standing in good stead. And at three-quarter time, just coming up, if you look for it every week, the VFL and WAFL highlights would point out it's finals time in those two competitions forward to those highlights. Ruwalt has had some highlights of his own today. Look at Holmes' work for this. Yep, there he is again. Head down. Smith got away to Allen. Some pretty tough work going on in there at the moment. In goes Powell and locks it up. I'll tell you what, the commitment by both teams is amazing. We saw Kirk a moment ago roving his own ball, working so hard. Look at these players yeah, working hard. Watch it here from both sides. Just desperate, fierce. It's a great contest and it's some great signs for Glenelg. They are in this contest. They've been asked to step up. The Eagles have put it on them and they've, said, they've stood up and said, right, oh, we're here. We're here to match up with you. Well, they'll come home with a significant breeze in the last quarter, but they've just proven that they can kick them against it. So the Eagles not without a chance. Vince. Cooper running onto the football. Handball just a bit high. Grokey, tackled the ground. They're under pressure, the Eagles. Vince to Sicilella, who's gone out of the game. And a free kick. We'll come back. It'll go to Bernie Vince for being held on to too long after disposing the footy. Long Vince and goes into long. The Schwartz, who's just had a dirty day, but he'll take a mark here. Oh, did he hold on to it long enough? Oh, I think the umpire might have just blown the whistle and then Schwartz 
takes the mark and he'll go back for one of his rare possessions, one kick at a handball. Yeah, look, the smarts of Ernie Vince then. Schwartz was in the goal square in perfect position. Vince saw him over the top. Schwartz was hailing it and he's popped it up high for him, gave him every chance. And Schwartz can thank Ernie Vince for that goal. Do they need that or what? Certainly need it. He needed to step up. He hasn't done much today, Schwartz. He is a quality player. He needs to kick goals when they need him, and that's right now. Just look here. It was Vince from outside 50. Saw the lead in best position, Schwartz. Got Rudolph under the footy. Is that a mark? It certainly is a mark, because the umpire paid it as a mark. <laughs> Free kicks, 21-13, the Eagles way. So that breaks a run of five unanswered goals for Glenelg, and they've taken control. They led by 21 points. It's back to 15 now. Approaching three-quarter time, 27 and a half ticked over in this, the third quarter. <laughs> Lindsay and Kirk. Vince was good. And this will catch the breeze and perhaps end up a long way. But comes down at centre half forward. And the snap from Garoki is pretty good. It's a goal. Well done. Oh, gee, that was good. That was fantastic. And Adam Garoki snaps a goal and they're back in it. And they've got the margin back to nine points with a couple of late ones in time on. Yeah, just watching here, it was a great kick out of the middle by Bernie Vince. Treby tapped it on, and Grokey over the top. Schwartz, good shepherding. Good goal to the Eagles, they're back in it. In a matter of 30 seconds, they got themselves back into the game. Bernie Vince, 19 possessions, five marks so far, seven possessions this quarter. Three goals, three in this turn to the Eagles. 5-2 to the Bays, it's back to nine points. Eagles, you think if they get another one, this last quarter set up brilliantly. Back wall to Hinge. He shoveled it forward. It's away by Block. In comes Ruwalt, rides the bump. Can he get past Lindsay? That'll be a task. He's taken the ground. No free kick. Lindsay is leg. And he just gives Ruwalt one to go on with. Then he doesn't like to kick, so he gives it to Petrenko. Petrenko kicks forward, and a holding. Infringement will go to Grokey, and a push as well. Grokey goes to the pocket, looking for Schwarz. Can't take the mark. Rudolph just flicks over him. Sherwood, Bay's out of trouble through Kane. Kane's got to get around Schwarz. Good tackle, Schwarz. Rudolph fed the handball out to Hinge, so they're finally out of trouble, the Bay's. Boy, it was pretty hot there for a moment. Kirkby just got himself under the footy and then won a free kick. He went too early. Got a free kick for in the back and now he gets 25. Umpire Ralston right on the spot. Time running out for the Bays to get another goal before three-quarter time. Fisher gave him something short. He goes to McConnell, sits it up over the top of his head. Block runs under the footy. Jarrell was a bit too clever. Just knocked it away and knocked it away again. He'll chase after the footy. Well played, Jared to Sicilella, who pirouettes and finds Stewart. And Stewart's short kick will find Fairclough on the outer side. Nothing long really on offer, so he chips for Powell, has to half volley it, and that'll be three-quarter time. Not a bad result in the end for the Bays, they certainly would be happy with that, you'd think, going into three-quarter time. With a nine-point lead, it could have been, though, Rod, so much better as we look at that scoreline. 11-4-70 plays, 8-13-61. Yeah, overall in the game, they've made the most of their opportunities when they've gone forward, Glenelg. A nine-point lead is fantastic. Their third quarter against the Breeze to do what they did as signs that they are a very good footy side in the making. Now, they're one week away from the finals. A lot to like about it. Now for the Eagles, Ronnie Fuller can sit back. There's a few things he can try. He can try in this quarter now. Yes, and they'd be, uh, well, there are a few things to try, I guess. There is something on the end of it to, in terms of confidence going into the finals. We mentioned the finals, finals football and VFL football, and the WAFL is coming up as well. Bendigo and North Ballarat faced off in the first elimination final in week one of the BFL final series. And after the Roosters kicked the first goal, it was all the Bombers. Bendigo kicked the next seven, completely dominating their opponents to go into quarter time, leading by 34 points. Jaron Wyman got one back for the Roosters early in the second, before the teams traded goals and blows in a series of fiery exchanges. The margin was 10 goals when Johns kicked his third just after half-time, before the Roosters put on five in a row. 
The Roosters came out firing in the last, their midfield taking control as they put on five goals in the first ten minutes. The shell-shocked Bombers without any answers as the Roosters ran riot. North Ballarat kicking 11 goals three to Bendigo's solitary point to run out emphatic 37-point winners. The Roosters completing a remarkable 96-point turnaround from the early stages of the third term. The second qualifying final saw Geelong take on Coburg and an entertaining opening term saw the Cats kick the first two before the Tigers hit back with four in a row. The tight contest continued in the second, Joe Gazzo goaling early for Coburg and Jason Davenport hitting back immediately. Brent Prismal put the Cats back in the lead early in the third before some brilliance from Andrew Cracker. Somehow walks a point through and kicks a magnificent goal. But Geelong weren't done. Three late goals seeing them hold a slender four-point lead at the final change. It was all the Cats in the last. The Cats running out 31-point winners. Cheap, Davenport and Hawkins, the standouts up front for the Cats. Hawkins three goals and 11 marks, enough to earn him best on ground honours. In other matches, seven goals from Nick Sortner couldn't save his team as Sandringham went down to Williamstown by two points in a thrilling first qualifying final. And Port Melbourne proved too good for Casey in the second elimination final. The Borough home by 13 points. East Perth got away to a slow start in the final round of the home and away season. Swan Districts putting the first two majors on the board. The Royals evened up the score with three in three minutes. Scores staying tight throughout the remainder of the term to see the teams heading for the first break with five goals apiece. But with a place in the finals beckoning, it wasn't long before the Royals kicked away. Ben McKinley making the most of every opportunity to boot four for the term. Daniel McCauley was also handy close to goal, and when Daniel Byrne kicked truly... Goes with a long shot, it's gone through. Yeah. East Perth went into the main break with a 29-point lead. The Swans managed just two goals in the third quarter, while East Perth continued to dominate, booting six to head into the final term with an unassailable lead. McKinley kicked his sixth, while teammate Andrew Merrington was also in good touch. Swan Districts gave a final yelp in the fourth with good goals from Nick Engel and Luke Miles before East Perth showed why they'll be playing finals football, booting eight for the term to run out 82-point winners. McKinley named best on ground with an eight-goal bag, teammates Daniel McCauley and Lane Spanderman both with three goals. In other matches, Claremont were far too good for Peel Thunder, the Tigers winners by seven goals. Brad Smith kicked his 100th goal of the season as Subiaco beat Perth. West Perth defeated East Fremantle by 15 points and the Bulldogs had the bye. To the ladder and at the end of the home and away season, Claremont claimed the minor premiership ahead of Subiaco. South Fremantle and East Perth rounding out the top four. West Perth just missed out, while East Fremantle finished a game further back, followed by the Swans and the Thunder, with Perth claiming the wooden spoon. Angela Pippos there. Interesting to note, Rod, that uh, in WAFL footy they play their finals now at Suburban Grounds, the first and second semi-finals. So that's what their crowds are like, I suppose, over, the, over there. Here it's a lot better. and. Uh, Mark Mickin down in the huddle. Let's have a listen to his instructions to his players. Is super important. Get your backside into them, block them out, hold them, and just make sure the ball falls in close. That's really important because when the ball falls in close, we do really well at stoppages. We've been doing really well because you blokes around stoppages have been getting inside, and if you haven't got it, if we haven't, super important whether it's ball up every time. Okay. How's everyone feeling, all right? Everyone's still got plenty of reason. Well, Mark Micken looking for a contest from his players there. And Ron Fuller, normally very controlled when he addresses his players. He was very, very passionate moments ago. Talked about the lack of concentration and the midfielders not working back when uh, Glenelg maintained possession. He wants them to uh, work a lot harder, increase that accountability, start to take the momentum back into the game. Just pointed out to Adam Grokey at the end there. Grokey took a good mark at centre-half forward and opted to pass for that. Back yourself, have a crack and kick him from there. Thanks for that, Sotis. Quick scores from other grounds. I would suspect West Adelaide with Wayne Wiedemann's last match in charge. Maybe with the breeze, a better third quarter than they've had all afternoon. 41 points the margin there. And South Adelaide, big third quarter there as well. Down at Mulunga, they lead by one point going in to the final term. And it'll be a fascinating final term here as well. Here's Michael Maynard. Certainly is, Neil. 
this should be a real beauty. They're playing for sheep stations this afternoon. Don't worry about this is just a dead rubber game. They want to go in with some finals, winning some form going into the finals. There's Kirk, Dabrowski in the ruck. Last quarter underway. Round 23 of SANFL footy. Kirk down. Who can get first blood? Treby got it to Stewart. By Ruwald. Got the kick away. Sherwood couldn't take it the mark. In comes Hinge. Grokey's got him. Pitching it with Salter. Umpire blew his whistle a millisecond too early. Okay, a couple of interesting changes here. The Eagles have now put McKenzie and Stewart into the middle. So they've changed their mix in the centre. And Glenelg is still going with the same players in Fisher, Murphy and Backwalls. That's more. Get your good players around the football. Not a bad idea. Vince is around it now. G gave it back. Grokey, a standing start. High kick. Schwarz is there and has got it. That is a lovely mark by Schwarz. He's had one of those days. He booted a goal in the third term and he needs to kick this one. Okay, Mike, we haven't harped on it as much today as often we would but uh, those centre clearances are crucial Eagles got it out they got momentum they've moved it forward Schwartz very smart he didn't lead out of the area where he could kick goals from he just held his ground in the area made it a one-on-one -on -one contest took a good mark kicks his second goal for the game and the tide might be turning back the Eagles way with the last three goals sure that breeze hasn't swung around so does I'm pretty sure it's howling to the right of screen yeah no doubt about that Michael it's still very strong it's favoring the bays there but uh, a great work by the Eagles to get that one early against okay, there's, there's the kick in as we said Schwartz just held his ground instead of leading so if he misses the mark the ball spoiled into a dangerous area where they were still a chance to kick a goal he took the mark kicks from almost straight in front good footy Looking for omens. Glenelg have won their past five straight, but their last loss was round 16 at Woodville to the Eagles by 21 points. Fisher out of the middle. Oh, Aaron hand pass. Oh, inside nicely for Fisher. Back well taken late. Play on advantage. Kirkby. Inside quickly. Fisher still running. Shook off the tackle. And he goes for McConnell. It sits up a bit red and knocks it away. Well done by the Eagles defenders. They sweep it. Pedler who started it. Now McKenzie wanted to drop it in short. And Jarrett took it. He's at half back left for the Eagles. Nobody loose ahead of him as such, so he just takes his time. He waits. Is there a chip option? He decides to go long. Grokey in the middle of the pack. Vince. And Grokey takes it. Nicely done by the centre half forward. He looks up. Drives it. And Salter comes out and takes it in front of the eyes. And now Schwartz is on the lead and he takes it comfortably. That was right. a classic. That was a John Landy because he looked over his right shoulder, Rudolph, and bang, off was Schwartz on the lead. Yeah, it was real good, but it's all around him. So confident, took it. And then Schwartz, good enough to lead straight up the ground. He could have led wide, but again, he wanted to have a shot for goal from straight in front, giving himself every chance to kick a goal. And uh, I think he's kicked the last three in a row, Michael, for the Eagles. He certainly has. You know, Schwartz needed to step up. He'd had a really quiet first half. Let's have a look at Solder here. In between three Glenelg players. Plays on quickly. Doesn't go too wide. Schwartz doesn't lead too wide. Doesn't have to. Plenty of space in front. Kicks a good goal. Sign of a good player to step up when he really needs to. And the finals around the corner. Good signs for the Eagles. Seven marks inside 50 for the Eagles today, boys. Schwartz has four of them. Some of those goal, uh, possession winners in the first uh, part of this game, Chris? No worries, Michael. For Backwell, uh, Glenelg Backwell leading with 21. Mules and Kane, 20 apiece for the Eagles. Treby and Vince, 19. Chickalella, 15. Yes, what a game it's been. Ebbed and flowed. Eagles are in front. Just amazing. Backwell couldn't take the mark. Jared running it close to the line. Fiacci, he was out, ball was in. Vince was in, got the kick away. Wobbly old ball, well read by Mules. Sikalela just lost sight of it for a second. Just trying to position his body. Mules has got a man in short. It's Ruwalt. Ruwalt kicks long. Dabrowski's getting back, and that's good play. Just got back, kept his eye on the footy, as a big man should do. And then found Powell. Powell in the centre. Jeez, a good player, Powell. Really gives 100% for the club. Underrated to Jarrett, who's really been a special player since he's crossed from Victoria. Luke Jarrett very rarely plays a bad game. The lead-up player is Grokey. The kick's exemplary. 
Grunke a long way from goal. Schwarz is on the lead, but that's a real terrible wobbly old ball. Vince has got it quick to boot. Which way will it bounce? It floats. It's going to bounce. Straight to Sherwood. Sherwood away. Needed a good bounce, Bernie, and didn't get one. The kick out wide finds Murphy, and Murphy will clear for the Bays. He's absolutely special, uh, Vince. He is such a good player, Bernie Vince. He knows what to do when he gets the footy, and he just has a touch of magic about him. I reckon he can have a real effect in this final series coming up. Runs just stopped a bit for the Bays. Stop start, down to half forward. Higher did well. Got it off for McKenzie and then Peddler and then Fairclough. The hand pass missed and Smith comes in for the Bays and forces a ball up. He'd be happy with that. Trevor Cranston, Ruckman for the Bays, just stretching and waiting for his time. Smith will go in the ruck against Dabrowski. Allen was in there, keeping his feet was Petrenko, did well, pushed off. Jared, Petrenko runs on. He was too quick for himself. <laughs> Lost the ball. Marnie tried to force it forward. Could have been holding. Dabrowski taken down, not before he got it away for fair play. Now they're away, the Eagles. McKenzie has it on centre wing. Smith, a great chase. And he forced a turnover in the high tackle and Hinge gives it to Mules. Mules takes his time, goes for Backwell. Sits it over the top brilliantly. Lovely, lovely delivery. And Brett Backwell takes the mark 40 metres out. Gee, it was a good play all round by the Bays then. Using the ball well. Just go back and have a look. You see the kick just so well weighted. Backwell made good ground. And now he gets a chance to score a goal. Not many more important than this in the last quarter when you're down by three points. Still rates. He still rates his most important moment in football. An under-13 premiership with Harvey Bay in Queensland. That's how high he ranks premierships because Brett Backwell's got best and fairest, a Liston trophy in the VFL and an SANFL McGarry medal. Well, that's good. And I'll tell you what, this side that's developing around him might very well take him to that uh, ultimate prize over the next couple of seasons. But that was terrific play by Backwell. Rated the kick nicely, went to the top of the left-hand post, used the wind to his advantage and a good goal. Good time to kick your first goal of the match. 14 for the year. He's been good without being outstanding today, Backwell, but at a big last quarter from him might see uh, things change. Just gets where the ball is. Kirk, wonderfully down to that man in question. Backwell who laid it on the ground. Why isn't that a free <laughs> kick? Taken by Fisher. Fisher's wobbly old ball to a pack situation. And Hire stands tall and takes the mark in front of Kirkby. Hire goes to the outer side to McKenzie, who just found an inch of space in front of Cranston. McKenzie in short to Powell, who's having an influence in this final term. Luke Powell. Shorts it up. Terrible kick. Snagged by Murphy. Away to Backwell. Will it cause a goal? Backwell out to McConnell. It's got the legs. And McConnell, you won't see him dishing it off from here. He'll strut back and have a look at them from 40 metres. And these are the sort of goals that Justin McConnell normally kicks. He's an impressive character. His kicking has been hot and cold today. He kicks with confidence. And he goes back with confidence. He makes you think he's going to kick a goal. Sugars took a rest there. Just a quick shot of him. Here's McConnell. I'll take a punt. I think he'll kick this one, Michael. Ooh, I'm prepared to say. I think he'll kick it. Kick to behind. Wrong side of the stick. Wrong side. McConnell's been terrific today. Let's Here's Murphy. Here. Yeah, Murphy, terrific. Well, they bring the ball in wide. And Jared, well, he took it over. So the boundary umpire, who was in good position to see if the sum total of the whole ball was wholly and solely <laughs> over the line. Did you follow that, Rod? Yes, I thought the whole ball was <laughs> over then. We're in good position here for that one. Good decision again, umpire. Neil, Jeff Smith's been pretty handy up forward in his 50th game today. He's been moved back now. He's got Grokey at centre back. Cranston, opposed to McKenzie, who lost out in the Battle of Wills ball out in front of the players race where we saw earlier today Matthew Doldig taken and he's off the hospital and perhaps some real problems with his ankle maybe even a break for Glenelg that's bad news heading to the finals Dabrowski took possession was taken off him Fisher charging in still on the ground 
came out to Ruwalt, used the pace nicely, away he goes. They share it, Fisher, he'll be chased by Simmons, who does a good chase, but just doesn't quite get there. He goes for Kirk. Oh, yeah. Strong, contested mark by Daniel Kirk, and he has been very good and very quick and very athletic this afternoon at his best. Yeah, terrific mark. I watched with interest Fisher, who's probably best on ground today. When he got that ball, he had no qualms about kicking it to a two-on-one to Kirk. He had confidence in him, went straight to him, and Kirk has so far taken the mark he needs to fulfil the contract by kicking a goal. One goal for the season, which is one kick, one other goal. Okay. So Kirk, who is recommended to the Bays by Peter Carey. Ruwalt and Holmes, or Holmes, on the, on the wings have been terrific for the base today. Oh, he's just left it left. Just hooked it a bit. Had plenty of height and plenty of distance. The Eagles with Sikalella taking a rest and Cooper coming back onto the ground. Evenly poised this game. Nearly 10 minutes into the last quarter, boys. Very evenly. Would like to pick a winner this close. 11 minutes gone. Five points in favour of Glenelg. And what an amazing game it's been. It's been backward and forward. Lindsay in the ruck, down. Fiachi can't get it. Cooper in there. And umpire Hay comes in and balls it up. The umpires have been pretty good today, I think. Rod, I think they've uh, they've let this game flow when they've needed to. Campbell just loves the umpires. Taken by Fisher. Fisher. Gets it to the top of the square. And a mark! Has been taken, I think it's Josh Marnie. And he's got it, he's experienced, just backing, taking a wonderful mark. I think you see, you watch Fisher here, once again, he's the person that started this, he's the engine room, Marnie a good mark, but Fisher has just been irrepressible in the middle today. Murphy takes a spell, he's given his heart and soul today, Byron. Marnie's floated in and out of the game, pretty good early, had some good patches, but he can make it hard for the Eagles with a goal here, and he does. He's got three. He celebrates. Why not? They go to him on mass, and that is a good sign. The troops are happy as they march into the finals. Well, that was the one that put them in front, uh, kept them in front. So terrific goal by Marnie. You see the mark here. Good mark. Again, we celebrated how well Fisher's been playing. Goals have been a lot easier to kick from this side of the ground, Michael, the grandstand side of the ground with the breeze. And Glenelg might, uh, well, keep the ball down the middle or on this side of the ground to kick goals this quarter. Eagles have only kicked three goals to the left of screen this afternoon into the breeze. They've got their task ahead of them. Two of those goals, by the way, in this quarter, one of which put them in front. Now they trail by 11 points. Fisher, again involved. Willoughby. And Petrenko take still inside the centre square. That centre wicket block looking rock hard out there. It's bounced just off the edge there. Down about the gully position. Cranston did well come over the top. Cooper had possession briefly and then Fisher on the on his back. They're different style players, Fisher and Vince opposed to each other, aren't they? Fisher in and under and hard. Vince goes for the ball when he has to as well, but he's a, a more stylish type player. Now it's all wrapped up again. It's basically will suit the Bays, you would think. It's running down the clock. It's been great around the stoppages. Mark Micken alluded to that at his three-quarter time. It's Vince it was, came over the top. Hinge, couldn't take it. Nicely done by Block, shared it with Willoughby. Willoughby comes for back with a little carry. Back will now, question of whether he can get away in space. He does well, turns Stewart around. Lovely disposal out in front of goal. And Kirkby takes the mark. Gee, that was clever from Backwell, such quality. And young Stewart found out how tough an opponent Brett Backwell is. It doesn't get much harder for Stewart playing on a back wall. He was clever and hard at the ball. See Marnie there too. He just jumped up a bit of a block from behind. And so the, uh, selfless acts here are working for the base. They kick another goal. So the margin extended to 17 points. Okay, we watch Kirkby here. You see back wall does very well. Their smalls are playing well. He gets it inside. Kirkby, good courage. And he goes back and finishes up, finishes off. And he has contributed his second goal now. And it's been very effective. 
Back wheel leading position, get it on the ground. 26 possessions, seven marks. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, really worked his way into the game. They've had so many options. They lost Dooldig early too, and they've just been able to find a way to go, haven't they? They have. It's been more about their midfielders, though. The good stories of the day, Fisher, Backwell. Then you've got Allen and Murphy working hard in the middle as well. Don't count out the Eagles, though. We know they can come back. It'll make it hard if another goal comes to the Bays. Kane taken to ground. No free kick either way. Free kick, too high. Luke Jarrett, the man on the bottom of the pack, as Ron Fuller looks on. Willoughby, the man. He's mixed his form up this year, along with a bit of injury, Willoughby. Got a man in plenty of space in Allen, uses him. Allen can go onto the pocket. McConnell leads in there. Will he get it? Kirkby flies. Punch from behind. Close to the line. Just about rolled off Stewart's foot. Here's Backwell again, giving his side an opportunity. Up 15, down 15. Cooper Boy. takes the mark. Never took his eyes off the football. He is courageous and never shirks the issue. Away to Redden. Redden's got a decision to make. A bounce. Where does the next kick go? It goes out wide. Schwarz has gone a long way from the goal. Rudolph. Schwarz had a piece of his jumper. It caught, caught underneath. Umpire watches on. He gives plenty of latitude for the ball to come out and then calls for a ball up. Maybe it's time for Redden to just take off and make McConnell work a lot harder. I mean, the game looks to me to be beyond the Eagles, but Redden can try some different tactics because he might come up against McConnell in the finals and he needs to have other strings to his bow. Fiachi taken to ground by Willoughby and then Fiachi just reciprocates. Just ditches him. Good bounce. Both Ruckman have a piece of it. Fiachi at the back of the pack. High ball. Mules is going to stand under it and take his medicine if it comes. And it doesn't, but he takes the mark. Mules takes his time. G chipped to the corridor well. Cranston to Holmes. We know he's a good disposer of the ball. This time into space to Kirkby. G Tom Holmes take a bow, young man. He spotted up Kirkby among three. Oh, he's been terrific. He's playing on a wing. He's playing on Jared, who's quality opposition. Just look at him size it up. His short kicks, the guy's leading, has been as good as anyone on the ground today, if not better. He gives Kirkby a chance from the side of the ground where not many people are kicking goals. And Kirkby has an either. Big leap late from Marnie. Three for the minor score. 18 points the margin. I'll tell you who, who Holmes reminds me of. He reminds me of a Matthew Stokes that come into the game and had clean football in 2002 in the final series. And this young bloke, it's not a final, but I'll tell you what, he's taken some clean ball and he's around about the same size as Matthew Stokes. And I reckon he's got as much talent. It's what he does when he hasn't got the ball as well. He just sizes himself up well and gets to position well on quality players. He's got a real future. Speaking of quality, Backwell got it to Cranston. Big Trev doesn't kick many, but he goes to the square. McConnell over the back. Marnie was there. Willoughby. Marnie. This could be it. He snaps. And he got a little bit too much hook on it. And it's a behind. Just got some elevation there he didn't require. Josh Marnie. 19 points the difference. Josh will be a little bit disappointing there. With his, uh, probably could have finished with a goal there, but uh, Marnie just tough and hard at the ball. Nearly rewarded with a goal. Holmes has had 17 possessions, three marks on Dubu. Yeah, that's, that's, he's been fantastic. I tell you what, Benny Moore's injury has been a blessing in disguise. Oh, bad kick carried too far. Ruwalt takes off for the Bays. Inside 50, McConnell manhandled. Play on, called the umpire. McConnell appearing, appealing either free kick or mark. Petrenko did well, danced his way through. Great kick, Treby. He's got a runner, and he goes off for Powell, whose awkward kick goes to half forward. Smith doing well, released it. Lomas intercept. Out in front looking for Schwarz, opposed to Rudolph. Schwarz was too strong. Rudolph came late. He was guarding this side of the ground. Schwarz led to the centre corridor. He did, and that's all he's doing. And you know, other sides should take note. That's how Schwartz plays his footy. He likes to use the corridor. Brilliant mark. Gives himself another chance. Ken Schwarz. The kangaroo. With 11 games with the kangaroos and uses that experience to belt through a goal and just a signal to his teammates, come on, we can still do this. Look, they just, instead of really creating the play, they capitalised on missed opportunities by Glenelg then, or mistakes by Glenelg, so 
great effort. Lomas got the ball down. Schwartz, a terrific mark in a good area to kick a goal. His impact's been terrific since half time. He needs some friends around him. Eagles need to get more attacking and start to create some opportunities here. Schwartz really urging his teammates on. Brody Lomas has had a quiet day. We, no we normally see him scouting around getting his 17 18 possessions. Under 10 today for Brody Lomas. Out of the centre. Taken by Cooper, Treby, Sicalella. Got the kick away. Eagles keep coming, but just enough pressure on Sicalella for Smith to take the mark. Rudolph just lobs it high. Sicalella's got to wait for it. Willoughby. Intelligent handball back to Fisher, who just keeps getting the footy. Lays it off to Kirkby. On the half volley was sensational. Back to Willoughby. Willoughby has a bounce. Sums it up. Goes inside 50. Here comes McConnell. Not paid the mark. Roving done. He's slow to get up. Redden in. And a ball up. Gee, McConnell just didn't quite have enough of it. Got the old jumper ripped across near the collar there. Yeah, just watch this. You watch McConnell. Like The effort's fantastic. I'd like to see a second effort here, though. Just bounce up, son. You're not going to get a free kick. I think he caught one of the chops. Yeah, on the way down. Oh. Cooper back to Sicalella, who got the kick away to Jarrett. They've got to keep playing on. They've got to take the game up to Glenelg. They need to score the Eagles. Awkward bounce. Favors Simmons. Simmons has got Treby. Just the handball a bit fierce, but it works out okay. Treby keeps it close. And well ducked away by Smith. I've been impressed with Smith today. His defensive work and his forward work. And as you said, Rod, just needs to get his decision-making right with his kicks. And he'll be a threat come final time. Yeah, I really like him since he's gone back. He's uh, read the ball well back there as well. Cranston comes in with Lindsay and wins it. Well done. The foot, the toe poke was in there from Block, who follows up. But Jared gets past. Goes along Smith and Mills. And Mills' opponent Clever. stayed down. Vince, what's the bounce like? Could be a goal. Going, going, going. And it is a goal. Bernie Vince he with can, the snap from outside 50. He can make something out of nothing. That's the second or third time in this game. He's taken the ball off hands. Just kick towards the goals almost indiscriminately. He knows exactly where it's going. He takes the ball there. Brilliant kick. He's put it in the right area. Schwartz was in the goal square. He's got past them. And a goal just by kicking the ball to the right area. Well done. Hats off to Bernie Vince. 23 disposals, five marks for Vince. Said a few moments ago, don't discount the Eagles. Glenelg have faded away in late in quarters. Well, it's coincided with Fisher going out of the centre too. He's done a, done a Herculean job. I notice he's not in the middle right now. Mark Micken said on numerous occasions, play the game right out. And they've got a challenge ahead at the moment, the Bays. They're in front by seven. The break goes to Lomas. Suddenly their ball gatherer is getting some footy. Well done by Grokey. Here's Simmons. Got to get around a couple back to Cooper. A straight kick will have them a point behind. Cooper's handball. Let's Sold Treby into trouble. He was good enough to get it to Sicalella. He goes short to Swirls. He's carving Rudolph up. And the midfield pressure is causing that. And Squalls, we know he's got a wonderful kick on him. He'll get the distance from here. That breeze might have just died away a little bit late in the day. Ron Fuller scratches the neck. Cool and calm. Can Schwarz be cool and calm? Close to the man of the mark. The kick's away to the left. Got the distance, but not the accuracy. One straight kick in it. Interesting, interesting play there. Fisher, who's been singing his praises all afternoon, went back to Simmons, but he looks tired, Fisher, and uh, Simmons got away from easily there. Brunel, the only side to have ever drawn a game with the Eagles since their inception. His block gave it off for Sherwood, the running defender. Sherwood's kick inaccurate. Well read by Pedler, cut across, took the mark. Pedler now has Lomas. And Lomas has Fairclough in the middle. Fairclough has Lindsay short, but he's not going to go there. Instead, he goes wide for Jarrett. Not a great kick. Follows up, gets a return hand pass. Then for Treby, not the greatest of kicks again. Treby on his left foot decides to go for Fairclough, chased hard. Well done by Kirk, put a little bit of pressure on. Ball over the back, Mules opposed to Vince. Mules kept it in front of him, Vince did well. Now he's got possession, now he's got a big load of trouble and he's over the line. It's just the little things that Vince 
is able to do. The way he gets his hands on the ball, the way he finesses it, moves it around. He's just got a touch of absolute class about him. Dangerous, isn't he? He is. Dabrowski and Smith, who had the better of it, Smith. Then Jeff Vince. Mass. Here's Vince. Vince on his and left. he's put them. He is dangerous. He is a player. Tell you what, he is an absolute class machine. But he had no right to get that or kick a left foot goal the way that he did. His last two goals just reeked of brilliance. Just watch here. You can see Vince, he just wanders off. I was watching him in this exchange. He's in a little bit of space. The ball broke free. There he is. No right to kick the goal, but he did because that's a class player in action. He's booted three. Have a look at this for a classy snap. Oh, got a good bounce too. Scores are level. And Glenelg, gee, they were in front by 19 points at the 18-minute mark. And the Eagles have come back at them. Cranston out of the centre. Desperation stakes. Here goes Simmons. Eagles on a roll. Simmons kicks long. Grokey too far for him. No free kick against Smith. Smith gets back. And Vince just about got him. Smith got it to Backwell. He was under pressure. And the cool, calm little former Carlton player from Queenslanders. New Cross just loves those Queenslanders. Away to Fisher. Fisher goes to Murphy. And Murphy marks right on the wing. Byron Murphy, not too much time to go, 26 and a half. Murphy launches it long, hopes for a mark, big pack, who can snag it? Sugars is there, ball locked in, Pedler desperate. Could we have another draw? Gee, it's all set up for one. The Eagles have come back with a mighty final term. Schwarz leading the charge and Vince, three goals and two apiece, wonderful last quarter. Cranston breaks the lines, gets it to Backwell, Backwell inside 50, kick needs to be precise. McConnell, can he do it? Marty's there, Marty kicks a goal! And the siren went, I think it's a draw. No, the umpire hasn't paid the goal, the siren's gone, so. No goal, it's a draw. Josh Marty needed another one second and the Bays would have won, yeah. but we've got another draw. To steal a uh, Dennis Pagan quotes like dancing with your sister, and both sides out there look to be dancing with their sisters right now, as a 92 all result is what we're uh, witnessing. I think we've had three draws this year on ABC Football. Let's have a listen and see what you think at home. I think Josh Marnie knew the siren had gone too. The way he kicked it really quickly, he'd heard it first. Pretty conclusive, I think. Well, what a game at Woodville Oval. The Eagles 13-4-92 have drawn with Glenelg 14-8-92 and a real brilliant game and showpiece of SNFL football. Yeah, look, there were no, it was a draw today and there were no losers. I guess there's no winners, but definitely no losers today. Glenelg were fantastic. They were tough and hard at it. It was a great finals hit out by both teams. When the Eagles looked gone, they came back. When Glenelg looked gone, they came back. Great third quarter into the wind. And now we get the result that's probably worthy for this game, Neil, the way that they finished and the way that both teams uh, played. It does seem appropriate that this match really, other than a psychological advantage, nothing was riding on it for both sides. So it seems appropriate that they finish with a draw. And it Mark Soderstrom uh, with one of the stars of the afternoon. Yeah, he certainly was an efficient, great touch. I, I, I suppose a, a draw at any stage of the season doesn't feel really great, but really there's not a lot on it today. No, you're right. The, you know, the positions on the ladder are basically sort of set. So, um, but you know, going into the finals, you want to have one over your opposition. So, um, you know, we might be meeting the Eagles in a few weeks. So it would have been nice to get a win, but you know, we'll take a draw. Just looking at the game today, though, it was a uh, fantastic third quarter against the Breeze. It looked pretty strong out there. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, it wasn't really a scoring end though. Um, I think you know it's really a psychological thing to win. But we came out after half time looking to really get a few goals, and we played well. Now, looking three weeks uh, to go in the season, you had to win one of these three games, top side, Sturt, North and the Eagles, and you fared pretty well. Confidence must be high. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we, it was going to be always a hard three weeks at the end of the season, but, boys, we're dug deep and, you know, we've uh, got a good result, so we're looking forward to the finals. Well done, mate. Personally, great game today, and uh, first time in eight years you boys will be there next week. We'll see you then. Can't wait. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Oh, yeah. So it's a good interview with a really good player in Fisher. Look, they play tough, competitive footy, and that's what wins finals matches. I think Mark Micken is a terrific coach. He's got these boys playing well, and they're going to make a real impact coming into these finals now. 
Ronnie Fuller, pensive as usual. You wonder, you wonder the emotions because look, they'd won four in a row: South Adelaide, West Adelaide, the last two, then North Adelaide and Sturt. So, some good form coming in. Maybe this will just harden them up, given that they had those matches against South and West before yeah. this one. I agree. They needed this match. They needed exactly the hit out that they got. And when he digests it, Ron Fuller, Fuller will be happy with this game and what they get out of it. See Josh Marnie with a couple of little errors to start the game, just overrunning that one, and to finish the game, just didn't get the kick away in, in time. Probably wasn't his day, but it certainly can be his series. And this uh, final series might revolve around a player with his experience. He's been there and done it before at the highest level, and uh, I'd be very wary of him if I was opposition sides coming into the finals. Well, obviously, this is the closest Glenelg has got to a win here in quite a while. As we mentioned during the call, round 19, 1999 was the last time that the Bays had managed to beat the Eagles here at Woodville. They looked a good thing at various times this afternoon, and look, they led, uh, they led by 21 points late at the 20-minute mark, in fact, of the third term, and they looked very good things at that stage coming home with the Bruce. Yeah, they did, and the Eagles really had to find something, and I don't know if they had it in them to find it or if they were going to. A couple of things went their way, but then Bernie Vince, absolutely sensational. I'm sure we'll go to it in the highlights of the last quarter. Kicked two great goals. Schwartz very effective in the second half. And the Eagles have got a lot at their disposal, some good players and a good game plan. They're very efficient. Both these sides are efficient sides who use the ball well. Let's not forget Young Holmes. His debut today was as good as you'd ever see from a player, especially a small. He used the ball well. Uh, Benny Moore's injury exposed a player who's going to be a very good player in the future for Glenelg. And this is in the third quarter as they marched on. As I said, they led by 21 points and they'd come from two points down at half time to lead by 21 into the breeze. Eagles seemingly hadn't made, a most, hadn't made the most of it, but in the last quarter, they outscored Glenelg five goals to three. And here's the last play of the match. Well, not quite. Not quite the last play of the match. And Josh Marnie turned around. You've got the feeling he was thinking, did you hear that? Did I, you hear that I when I heard he it? he probably wished he had a kick at left foot. He wanted to make a certainty of it as you would. Then he heard the siren and he blew that uh, decision not to kick left foot, I guess. So there the scores at 92 apiece was the final score. And so does with Ron Fuller. Well, Ron, before the game, we talked about the need for your boys to have a good hit out. South and West the last few weeks, you certainly got it. Ah, oh, we did, yeah. Um, there were certainly signs in the game that we were a little bit sloppy, a little bit untidy, uh, just a few little things we didn't do. And uh, when you have a drawn game, every little thing matters, I guess. But uh, look, I'm glad for the game. It was a good, tough hit out. Um, uh, we went right to the end, which was the pleasing sign. So, uh, yeah, we look forward to uh, North Adelaide next week. Possibly a good sign, though. A disappointing third term when you had the breeze, but the response was good in the last. It was, and yet, uh, early in the third quarter, we had some opportunities, didn't take them. Then the middle period, they really took advantage. And then I thought towards the end, like in time on the third quarter, we'd gain momentum again, but probably didn't get the goals that uh, we needed just to give us uh, give us a break, really. I don't, don't even know whether we're in front. I think we were behind at three-quarter time, weren't we? Yeah, yeah you were. Um, now, Bernie Vince uh, showed some nice touches of magic in that term. The Crows have gone down by three points. Have you been given any indication of whether you'll have him for finals if they don't continue? Uh, yes, the Crows have indicated that both Bernie and Ken McGregor will be available for us, yeah. Make you smile, won't it? Oh, it's a little bit better. Good on you, mate. Also, Benny Schwartz, I thought Rudolph held him pretty well early. Good to see him step up in that last term because he did quite well against the Bays last time too. There's an excellent sign from Ben. Uh, all forwards, uh, when they're been beaten early or uh, got on top of, it's a terrific sign of character that they can tough it out and his uh, his signs in the last quarter were very good. Also noticed too, uh, you had to do a little bit of shuffling down back with McConnell starting to go well, you gave Redden to go there and move things around. You confident you've got uh, enough in defence to cover the finals? Yeah, I thought Dennis did okay. We um, we put Macker on the ball in the end, and that meant we had to change it around a bit. And Zach went back there then, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty confident with Dennis. He's uh, done a good job for us this year. Good on you, Ronnie. Well, we look forward to seeing a big game next week against the Roosters. It was a cracker when you played him here a couple of weeks ago too. No, we're all looking forward to it. I think. Ron Fuller, and that was a very interesting insight into what he's thinking as we look forward to another final series. Of course, the Eagles defending premiers. One player this afternoon who wants a premiership badly. Brett Backwell got a McGarry medal last season. Sure, he would trade it in, as I mentioned during the call again, that uh, 
he would trade it in to get a premiership. His best moment in football, an under-13 premiership. Yeah, he's going into the finals with good form. He's terrific last week, and he's been good in their string of wins. So he's an important player to them. As long as he stays fit, he'll uh, help their midfield. Their midfield is their strength. They're very strong around the ball. And as I said, Mark Mickens created a really good midfield. And sides that have good midfields, they uh, make a real impression in the finals. And this team has that. Don't worry about that. Back well with 30 possessions this afternoon. And on the other side of things, Justin Sicolella, the captain of the Eagles. Well, I don't even think he had his best game this afternoon by a long stretch. He probably didn't, but he knows how to get himself up for the big games. He's a proven big match performer. He is a quality player, and uh, I wouldn't read too much in him not having a big game today. He'll certainly be there when the guns are firing come the finals. Very clever around the ball. I mean, that's the bottom line, isn't it? He, he is just so clever in traffic. He is, and they work, he works so well in with Lindsay. You see him a couple of times here, and the rotation's through. This Eagles side knows each other very well. They've been together a long time, just like Central. They've experienced a lot of success, and they know how to play when the chips are down. So they'll be, they'll be good in the finals. Don't worry about that. 19 positions this afternoon for Justin Sicolella. Surprise packer this afternoon. I thought the red-headed Ruckman for Glenelg was Daniel Kirk. I thought he was very good. He it shows good great work. athleticism. Yep, and when he pushed forward, he was terrific. So he gave him something to aim at when he went forward. And uh, there's a lot to like about the way he goes about his footy too now. Here's in this afternoon, Daniel Kirk. Uh, just the one goal, six kicks, five hand passes, and six marks falling across there a couple of times in the back line to cut off the play from the Eagles. Justin McConnell. We know he's done some special stuff, hasn't he? He is an exciting footballer, this boy. I think the way that he uh, finishes off, he gets excited about his play. He reads the game well. He's just smart. He's a smart player. And I think his best is still to come. He is very good already. He kicked 58 goals before today. And uh, he's now up on 63. And another player will have a big impact in the finals. Yes, and he kicked uh, 35 goals last season, and he's right up in the goal kicking again this season. And in fact, he'll finish second to the leading goal kicker in the competition, Brant Chambers. As we look through the goal kickers, Schwarz with four, the leader for the Eagles. And what do you make of the stats? Well, everything is going to be pretty close here. We go down and see that uh, the Tigers went inside 50 a bit more, 48 to 40. The centre breaks were pretty even. I really like the way the Tigers went about it there, but the Eagles still held, held advantage and did well. Close games, usually close statistics. And again, not a lot to be read into that, but the coaches can certainly drag a lot out of this game. Positives and negatives, areas to improve, learn a lot about both sides in the opposition, and this will take them into the finals well prepared. Look through the results, and last night, of course, round underway with North Adelaide securing the double chance, beating Sturt by seven points coming. Don't forget, back from 50 points down. North Adelaide, great victory. The Eagles, a draw here this afternoon, the second time in the Eagles' history that they've had a draw, and both times with the Tigers. Port Adelaide beating West by 62 points to finish what would be a disappointing season for them, and Norwood beating South by 12 down at Norlunga again disappointing seasons for the four clubs there Port West, Norwood and South Adelaide Certainly and they'll be looking to uh, have good pre-seasons as they all do and I'm sure they will because every side has a good pre-season and front up next year with better performances And Sturt and Glenelg will be looking to continue next week in the finals when they meet in the elimination final should be a great contest that between two clubs who missed, lay out, missed out last year and then the qualifying final between North Adelaide and the Eagles note that special time, note that it is Sunday and we are on air from 1.30pm on ABC TV, we look forward to that contest interesting contest this afternoon Rod and yeah, who would take the better out of it quickly I'm not, I think they'll both take a lot out of it, I think these two sides might meet again, if not in a preliminary final, maybe even a grand final this year I think they're that good, so uh, I know Central are setting the standard, but these two sides will meet at least in a prelim final, I reckon. Plenty to look forward to. Finals action next Sunday afternoon. We'll see you then.